a, a mass amount of evidence that leads us in this direction that we change our minds. Well, bro, it's weird, well, right? It's like, like yeah. what's like, say I'm talking to someone and they're like, oh, constant acceleration. I'm like, no, nah, it's not constant, though. I'm like, oh, it's close. Okay, so it changes? <laughs> yeah, so then it's not constant, right? Well, no, not technically. It's close. Okay, tomorrow. Constant acceleration. What I'm saying is there's some phenomena going on here, right? Like when you talk about the, the Newton thing, right? Like, yeah, I get it that they they can say mass attracting mass and some of them can work out the elementary math of Newton or whatever. And so like they really like it works on the solar system and they just like repeat that like a, like a robot. But bro, what I'm saying is that means they haven't been able to look at their belief that the Earth's a ball that goes around the sun look at what it really means and be like, okay, if that's true, if what I believe is true, that means that Newton can't be right. Like just fundamentally on the earth, not on the quantum and cosmological, just on the earth, it can't be right. But we use it for all this other stuff and I have to use it and invoke it and this is how I understand everything and this is how it makes sense to me. So therefore, I haven't completed my belief yet. You see what I'm saying? Like they haven't actually, lo- they haven't actually even internalized their belief but they come here for years trying to convince us of their belief. That's really but, weird, I, I, right? I'm really, I, I'm really not following you, though. It's just it's saying that the Earth orbits the sun means that Newton was wrong. That, that doesn't follow. It. I don't understand it what makes, you mean. But we, we're, we're blessed with a live test, okay? So check it. If it, Newton says that if an object is moving in a straight path, it'll continue in a straight path. Until an external force, an outside force, acts upon it. So if I throw a baseball, it'll keep going straight unless an external force acts on it, like the wind blows on it or its weight, people call force, brings it down, right? The baseball will keep going straight till the wind blows. Einstein says that that object will look like it's going straight to you, but if you step to another reference frame, it'll be curving. So it's actually going straight. It doesn't have to have an external force on it to move it from going straight because it free falls in a geodesic path of the curvature of space time. So it's going straight and curving so it can curve without an external force. To explain Michelson morally, you have to use Einstein's explanation. If there's an actual force acting on the Earth, which if Newton's correct, there would have to be an actual force acting on the earth to make it leave the straight path because it goes in an orbit around the sun, right? If that was true, if there's an actual force acting on the earth moving it, then that would cause a displacement in the Michelson-Morley experiment. You would detect that motion because there's literally a force acting on the earth in this reference frame moving it. So the only explanation, if the earth is orbiting the sun, Newton cannot be right. Literally, that's why all of physics updated to Einstein after Michelson Morley. It wasn't just because of the ether, even though Wikipedia told everyone to repeat that. All you have to do is go read Einstein's paper. You have to go do is read Edward Morley's paper or Albert Michelson's paper. They tell you straight up. That's also why they're working on so hard and feverishly on modified Newtonian dynamics. Mon- exactly. Called- yep. So if they could just go back to Newton... They would. It wasn't only the first law. It was a second law, too. There, the relativity wrecked Newton every, in every way. I think maybe his third law may still hold up, but I'm not so sure. But not on the quantum scale. But the, the reason this is important is it wasn't just that Einstein wrecked him. It was like he had to be replaced. So the options were, A, the Earth's not moving around the sun, or B, there's a new version of gravity that has to be brought in. So, like, to be like, oh, well, it works on the solar system. It actually doesn't. It's off 43 arc seconds per century. Oh, but that's not much. Okay, it doesn't work. So, when you say it works on the solar system, then I point out, no, it literally doesn't work. And then you respond with, well, it pretty much works. Well, then it doesn't work, does it? So, let's not repeat the phrase that it works anymore. That's weird. It doesn't work on the quantum scale. Everyone knows that. Neither does Einstein. But it doesn't even work on the earthly, terrestrial, local scale for Michelson-Morley, for interferometry, right? So what I'm trying saying in conclusion is if someone believes the Earth orbits around the sun, cool, bro, believe what you want to, but at least actually believe it, like believe what it is. If that's true, Newton cannot be true. Newton's not even on the table as possible anymore if you think the Earth yeah. flies or through space. I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to explain this to you why Newton can't be right. Because if Einstein is right, and gravity is not a force, and it's keeping it's keeping Earth going in a circular motion, orbiting the sun. 
that's contradictory to what Newton said about objects moving in a straight line. Like an orbit's not a straight line, is it? Is a circle a straight line? <clears throat> See, if you mix up relativity and Newton, you get into this force discussion where in Newtonian classical physics, gravity is a force, right? Yeah, but yeah, but our modern our understanding point. our modern understanding of gravity is that it's not new and it's it's Einsteinian gravity where there isn't a force. You can't have a force and not have a force at the same time. It's contradictory. It's not is that how physics works? You just have contradictory well, things can, happening in physical reality. But you can work it out with Einstein's field equations and you can work it out with classical physics, orbital mechanics, and you come up with the same number. Uh, you Your response is, there, right? yeah, it's a contra. He asks, is, can you have contradicting things happening in real physical reality? Is that how physics works? And you said, you can get the same number with the math. Yeah, you can work it out either way. That's not an yeah, answer, this bro. Isn't about, this isn't about math. This is what's happening in physical reality. Math is abstract, and it's, it's a, really irrelevant at this point because this is physics. And we're trying to figure out what's happening in physical reality. Uh -huh. I don't even believe in the relativity thing, but that is the mainstream understanding. You can't have Earth orbiting. If Newton's right, Earth can't orbit the sun. Just straight up. Because otherwise, without a force there, like Newton, Einstein, relativity wrecked Newton's first law and second law. We know that. That's why they're working on modified Newtonian dynamics. If that wasn't a problem, they wouldn't be working on modified Newtonian dynamics. Everything would just be fine and it works, right? Why would they need to modify it? Do you know what MOND is? No, I don't. I hadn't studied on that. It's just a new updated version of there's like hundreds of them, but like that this is this is that moment, bro. We're about to hit the pull the pin out moment. You know what I'm saying? Because like we've hit a wall here. Jeremy's pointing out that they Einstein doesn't work with Newton. It's even worse than that. They had to bring Einstein's theory in, or they had to lose the heliocentric model. And so if the this is here's a here's a pin moment, right? It's coming. Here it comes. If your argument is, but the math works for either one of them. Okay, I can show you an equation for electromagnetic gravity, and the math works as well. So therefore, it's just as valid. It's just as valid as Newton and Einstein, because the math works. And I can get the same value for all three of the maths. That's why I like the clock on the wall scenario. All right, you got a clock on a wall. Nobody can see inside the clock. You can only see the face of the clock, two hands, or maybe three hands with the second one ticking, whatever. You can do all kinds of math and observations and figure out, oh, all the hands are going to line up or they're going to be perpendicular and figure out you know, when the hands are going to be where. But that doesn't mean you know what's making that clock tick. It could be gears, a pendulum, an oscillation of a cesium atom, midgets behind the wall, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Was that even relevant or I don't know? Yeah, bro. It's like, yeah, we, we, the, we see the clock moves, bro. I can come up with 15 different theories and make the math tell me that it's going to be on the two after 10 minutes. Yeah, just because your math works doesn't mean it's midgets behind a wall. Yeah, you he thinks it's midgets. I think it's fairies. So... But the math's the same, right? So you can believe in the midgets, you can believe in the fairies. And well, I think your thing is more real because, you know, if you say it's, like, if you say it's, uh, you if if you say it's midgets and he says it's unicorns, like, at least we know midgets are real. You know, with your, with your electrostatic thing, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just crazy, bro, because, like, I'm genuinely curious. I'm not, like, I'm not here to be like, ha-ha, showed them. I'm actually confused. I don't like it. If you believe it, that's cool. But like, why not believe what it actually is? I, I know the answer. The answer is it's easier to defend Newton 
because it's simpler. At least that's what you guys think. You guys think it's simpler because the math is simpler. It isn't simpler though because it doesn't have a time variable. It claims gravity is instant. So there's some force that can't be detected directly that's acting on two bodies at the same time through millions and billions of miles, trillions of miles instantaneously, which means you have to have some type of medium with mutual contact like an ether. It's instantaneous action at a distance. Newton's gravity is, is actually more complicated. It requires instantaneous action at a distance. Right? But like outside of all that, my point is the Earth can't be orbiting the sun if Newton is correct. Literally, literally, bro, because of Michelson Morley, which has been replicated hundreds of thousands of times. In fact, your side now tries to claim that there is no fringe shift at all, which that's not true. There is one, but it's small. But your side says it's instrumental error. There is no friend shift. There is no friend shift. Okay, every time you say there is no friend shift, you're saying there is no Newtonian gravity. Mm -hmm. does, that, does that click with you? You know how you guys say, no, they didn't get a friend shift, and that disproved the ether. Now just repeat the phrase in your mind. They didn't get a friend shift, and that disproved Newtonian gravity. Because that's what it did. And your paradigm, that's literally how it went down, bro. And Einstein went and proposed this idea to people like the Royal Society, and they laughed him out of the room, dude. They're like, yeah, we haven't figured out what's going on with this Newton thing and, and how the Earth's orbiting and why is Mickelson Morley not working or whatever. But you can get out of here with this like concept spinned in warp and there is no ether and space is not absolute and fixed and that Newtonian laws are wrong, laws of motion are wrong. Like You sound like a crazy person. Then the they, after years, they're like, damn it, we, we have nothing better. We got to go with Einstein. He was right, I guess. Yeah, so you knew they only adopted it when it became more advantageous. Hold on, man, real quick. Sorry. Real quick. Or no, go ahead. My bad. My bad. Go ahead. You, I've been talking. No, you're fine. I was just, no, I was just saying they only adopted those philosophies after it became more advantageous. That's all I was saying. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I kind of interrupted you. It was all good. Thank you. Um, but Jesse... A straight line, when Newton was talking about a straight line, he didn't mean geode a geodesic. Newton meant an actual straight line. Einstein was talking about a curved line, not a straight line. So I don't know. Well, Einstein was talking about it both, right? He's saying it's both, right? It's straight from this perspective, but then it's curved from that perspective. It's both. And it, you know what I'm saying? Really, Einstein I, I would say there's quote. no such thing as a perfectly straight line in the entire universe. I got a quote from Feynman saying Einstein debunked Newton's uh, laws of motion when he said objects move in geodesics. Yeah, it's basic stuff, but this is what I'm saying. You, remember, like, you guys know the scene I'm talking about where they walk up to you in Men in Black and they hit you with the, with the pin? They flash, the pin flashes and the just wipes your memory clean? Yeah, is that what it's called? It's called I don't know. I, I was trying to think of it last night when you guys were talking about it. Is it the neuralizer? I don't know. I should look it up because I need to start saying it. Like it's just like that, bro. Because we're, we're we've reached that point. So then it gets quiet, and then I swear, bro, there are like men in suits that run over to these people's computers at home and just whoop. They send a signal through their webcams or something, and it's like this conversation didn't take place. Tomorrow, it'll it'll be the same thing. It'll be like unculus. Well, you expect them to like take you at your word and believe you or is no i expect them to actually inform themselves on their own belief system before coming on the internet for seven consecutive years arguing it improperly exactly is there a chance that might they might not believe you i don't need them to believe me i need them to just go inform themselves of their own belief you must have missed how i just just said that yeah it's like literally like exactly what you just said are you disputing what I'm saying? <laughs> He's proving your point. <laughs> this is so wild. Isn't this a wild phenomenon, dude? What do the, what do the truthers think about this? Because to me, I'm like really fat. The last about. few days, I, yeah, I've been really fascinated with this the last few days. See, this crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving them Newton anymore because it's just, it's like I'm, I don't, I'm not going to pretend like I'm eight. If you guys want to have eight-year-old conversations, go for it somewhere else. I'm not doing it. Like, like we're not going back. Like, if you want to do math, 
Oh, my bad. Go ahead. No, nah, so my eight-year-old can see through their bullshit. He comes home and tells me about the lies they teach him about fucking uh, dark matter and black holes in the fucking universe. And he's like, it's all CGI. Like, nothing they're showing me is even real. <laughs> Dude, if, they, if you want to keep Newton and use the Newton's math, you need to do that shit in the abacus and start telling time with sand. All right? Yeah, exactly, bro. Exactly. We got to go back to the 1600s, bro. Dude, you know how they say flat Earth is archaic and stupid, and it's been disproven for so long. Then they come in here and they talk about something that's archaic and stupid and it has been disproven for so long. <laughs> like, it's so stupid, bro. Yeah, you remember 1600 when Newton thought that gravity was a direct act of God and that there was an ether and that the sun was the center of the whole solar system. If we go back to then. The math works. I always thought it was crazy that, like, they would come in and be like, nobody ever thought the Earth is flat. And then, like, <laughs> under a video about the shape of the Earth, it's like, flat Earth is an ancient belief that fucking people used to. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It, like, no, uh, no, no high level academics even think that gravity is a force that acts on Earth. No. It's no, wild I, that they, when you have a free falling that. when you have a free falling object, they can measure there being no force. That's you know, there's supposed to be if Newton said there's this shit is supposed to be a force. There's no force there. And I will say though, there is a, there is a downward electric current on the Earth that's effectively a force, but like the buoyant relationship of the the, the objects, like say in, in its medium or whatever, like that buoyant force is so much stronger. You're not going to detect it, but. Uh, Walter Lewin, which is like a very famous physics professor and astrophysicist, right? Walter Lewin is like very notorious for their paradigm. And he'll tell you, bro, everything on the earth is electric. Like gravity doesn't attribute, account for anything on the earth. It's all electric. It's not until you get out into the planetary scale that we start talking about gravity. Oh, you don't say, Walter. <laughs> it is electric. It's electric out there, too, my dude. Bro, I spent two hours last night looking for Einstein's tensor, tensor equations and, and field equations and shit because Jesse didn't... Uh, I don't know. It's weird. It's, this is weird with it. I'm, I know. It's so weird because what I'm saying is they're sitting in the room right now. They heard all of this, and they will literally come back tomorrow and say it again they'll go to the other baller server and all talk about it right now they'll come up to a flight earther and pretend that they're teaching them by talking about newton again so like it is crazy bro that's why like, you, at some point you gotta dust your feet off right you're like all right bro you're gonna just keep doing it right it's like are you going to keep taking your girl back if she just keeps on sleeping with the neighbor? Like, eventually, you got to get it through your head. Like, bro, she's sleeping with the neighbor, bro. Like, she's just, I mean. Hold on, real quick. Left lane, F equals MA doesn't work. We have mass accelerating on Earth. It's in free fall. It's accelerating. Mm. There's no force there. There's no force. It doesn't work. Yeah, weight is a force. That's what that is. No. There's no force, dude. When when something's in free fall, there's no force. It has no weight. Something in Earth has Earth in your model has zero weight because it's free falling. No force, no weight, nothing, bro. F equals ma does not work. That's why. That's the main reason they're working on modified Newtonian dynamics is because of the second law. It really all start. Yeah, it really all started with Michelson Morley, bro. Michelson Morley is when Newton got debunked. And like this one saying well, like, like, Wikipedia doesn't tell you guys that, so you'll just never believe it. You'll never go read it, you'll never research it, you'll never think about what I just said about how if there was an external force acting on the earth, like Newton said, then you would get a displacement with the light. It's just no, Wikipedia says ether, bro. That's all it says. Well, I mean, it's I always go back to I hear you saying all this and you say we're just come back tomorrow and say the same thing. Yeah. Your words don't have an effect. On the reality of, of of engineering and and modern physics and the way things actually work, until you can demonstrate what you're talking about, I mean, 
if you think electricity is causing weight, it seems like it would be simple to demonstrate that. Now stop Wire changing the up, it on the scale. Left no, left I'm, not, I'm, not, not, I'm not talking about I'm that. just saying. You, you, I'm not talking you, about that. But, but you're going to have to demonstrate what you're saying. You can't just say it and expect it to but, be but, bro, 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 We're not talking about that, though. Like You, you hear how like, somehow it's permissible for you to keep invoking Newton unless I replace it with my electrical interpretation. No, no, no. I can do that, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about how if you, when you say stuff like that doesn't change how your words don't change how all engineering works and uses Newtonian mechanics, then what you're saying is Newtonian mechanics is legitimate because it works on the earth, right? That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. So what that means then is the earth can't be orbiting the sun. That's what you say. But I just I explained why. I explained. I explained why, dude. No, Einstein. Dude, listen. 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 This is very it. simple. You have okay. To demonstrate. Do, it. do you know how interferometry works, bro? Okay. They shoot out a light beam, right? And what they do is they send out one light beam, and so that they can guarantee it's all in the same phase shift, right? So they send out a light beam, and then they split it, because if they split it, they know it's still perfectly in line with each other because it was shot from the same place at the same time. It was one light beam split into two. That's how they keep them completely in phase. Then they use a mirror to make one light beam go one direction and the other light beam go perpendicular to that. Then the light beams come back, they reflect back to the middle, and then they go to the receiver together. They should get to the receiver at the same time. Right. Yep. Unless, it, yeah, it, unless it's in motion, isn't it rotational motion that causes it to get out of phase? Okay, so you agree that if if there's rotational motion, just like the Sagnac effect, then one of the light beams will take longer to get to the receiver. Yes. Okay. Now, if the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, that is a rotational motion. Okay, so so Einstein said it's not a rotational motion; it's a linear velocity, yeah, because yeah. it's free falling in a geodesic path of curved space time. So it's going straight, even though from another reference it looks like it's curving around the sun. Okay, so Einstein said no, we we aren't going to detect the Earth's rotational orbit because actually it's a linear velocity. Newton says you would detect it. It is a rotational motion because there's an external force acting on the earth, making it rotate. This is why in Einstein's paper, he literally uses the word rotational motion to describe the orbit. When talking about Michelson Morley and how he fixed the problem, he literally calls it rotational motion when talking about the orbit. Okay, so that did, there's no way we don't understand it now, right? Like we have to understand it now. Well, no, you but, but you said it though that that the Earth orbiting the Sun in free fall is the same as if it were moving in a linear fashion, right? According to Einstein, yes, but not according to Newton though. Einstein says that objects can go in a curved path without an exterior force acting on it, an external force, right? An outside force. But Newton says an object will continue in a straight path unless there's an outside force that acts upon it. They're fundamentally different. Somewhere in the Feynman lectures, he says that uh, I, when Einstein said, Feynman says that when Einstein said objects move in geodesics, he, I don't know the exact phraseology he used, but something to the effect like he debunked Newton's laws of motion. Yeah, of course. It's fundamentally different. Yeah, so, I mean, it's Feynman, bro. I mean, I could maybe scrounge up the quote for you. I've posted it tons of times in the past. I don't know. Is there, is there you even interested? And did this what happened? You just get a bunch of people gaslighting. You guys are sad. Like this dude, Apophino, whatever his name is. Are you saying you don't trust Wood's conclusion? He's a highly credentialed expert with absolutely zero monetary motivation to make things up. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Why don't you go look it up then, bro? Don't trust my conclusion. You've been here for seven years, bro. You've been here for seven years, and you're not just going to go look it up? Why don't you just go look it up? I'll drop the paper. I'll drop Einstein's paper for you right now. I'll even tell you where it's at. 
and then he's going to find Feynman explaining it to you. So are we saying to trust us? Are we saying trust your own accredited sources from your own paradigm, like Albert Einstein and Richard Feynman and Arthur Eddington? And Isaac Newton. You don't have to trust what's it. Go read the Principia. Go read the Special and General Theory of Relativity. He gave a he gave a dumbed down summary version of the two. He called it the version for your mother. Gravity, even within their own model, doesn't work. I mean, did, did any of them have any understanding of the three body problem? No, oh, they don't even understand the difference in Newton and Einstein, bro. Even just an orbit is a leap of faith. Like, there's no demonstration, there's no reason to believe. Like, there's no such thing as an orbital force that's never been demonstrated. They say it's the combination of like a lateral or like a straight motion and a free fall but that's like they're just observing orbits in the sky and then claiming that that's like a that's a force like a dynamic force i think you were actually right jeremy when you were saying they essentially account for no mass like f equals ma doesn't even work yeah they have to they have to take mass out of the equation because if they have it in there all the models fall apart It only works with with two bodies. I'm going to ask AI for you guys. Maybe you guys listen to AI. See if we can get it right. I mean, it's not just us saying Newton's laws are wrong. I mean, we got Andrea Gaz. She won a Nobel Prize in physics. And made a quote: "We can absolutely disregard Newton's uh, law of gravity or something." Uh, Feynman said Newton laws of motion were wrong. Like, dude, Newton's gone, bro. He had a good run. They're working on modified Newtonian dynamics feverishly. There's tons of them. They're trying to fix it because it doesn't work. If it worked, why would they be working on it on trying to fix it? It's weird. How else bro. can I? It's weird. Yeah. How else can I say this? Right. I don't. You guys know and admitted that. Yeah. Okay. The light beam's going to split. It's going to get hit by a mirror. So they're going to reflect in two different directions perpendicular. Then they get reflected back. They meet each other in the middle, and then they go to the receiver. They're going to get there at the same time, unless and left lane finished it. Unless there's a rotation that displaces the light, and because of that motion, it'll detect the motion. Right. So if it's rotating. Right, then one of the light beams will be behind the other one. Okay, that's the Sagnac effect. You guys claim it proves the Earth rotates. That's literally your guys' claim of ring laser gyros, the Sagnac effect. Mickelson Gell Pearson. This is, this is your side's claimed evidence for the Earth rotating. Side note, it doesn't actually work, and there's no relativistic solution to the problem. You have to make fairy tale pseudoscientific transforms that no one can agree on. There's like 14 proposed theories to try to explain it, but never mind all that. The Sagnac effect, real, factual, undenied, accepted phenomena, right? So the, the light, the interferometry will detect the mo rotational motion. There will be a fringe shift, an interference pattern, a displacement meaning that the light will not get to the receiver at the same time. One light beam will be slightly behind the other, which will cause them to start to intersect in waving patterns, right? So you'll get an interference pattern, fringe shift. Okay, the Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun. That's a rotation. Therefore, we should be able to detect the Earth's motion since it's rotating around the sun with interferometry, same way we do the Sagnac effect. But we don't detect that. Okay? <laughs> Einstein solved that problem by saying, well, actually, Earth's orbit is a straight path. It's linear. And since it's linear velocity, you wouldn't be able to detect it. 
In order for him to claim the Earth's orbit was linear, he had to propose a new version of physics, mainly that the object will actually be going in a straight path, a linear path, but from another reference point, for example, the sun, the Earth will be curving, but actually it's just going in a straight path through the curvature of space-time, and as it free falls through that curvature of space time, the shortest path from point to point would be a curve from the outside reference, but it would still be a straight path to the Earth. So it's not curving, it's free falling in a geodesic path of the bending and warping of space time, the curvature of space time. That was his explanation as to why we didn't get Mickelson Morley. Without that explanation, you guys are screwed. The Earth can't be orbiting. There's no way around it. If you use Newtonian mechanics, the Earth can't be orbiting. Einstein saved it by making that explanation. Therefore, you cannot claim that the Earth orbits the Sun and claim Newtonian mechanics at the same time. That's hilarious. Like their kinematic math for orbits literally is a rotational uh, force. <laughs> literally a rotational force, and they still use it to this day and teach <laughs> teach astrophysics students. And it's so funny. Ooh, that's so bad. This is, of course, you know, Toby, where it got really bad for them. Is that if with with that whole explanation of how they got away with it, then they had to claim there was no friendship, even though there was. So they claim there was no friendship, and the reason there's no friendship is because you're not going to detect the motion because it's actually a linear velocity, right? Okay, cool. Einstein just saved the day, supposedly, when he wasn't lusting after miners. And then we detected linear velocity with an interferometer in the 21st century. I so it doesn't, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work anyway. You say there is no friendship, and I, I promise the friendship that's there isn't real. It's instrumental error. What kind of error? We don't know. Temperature. Okay, let's test for temperature. Nope, that didn't do it. Oh, well, there's something else there, I promise. Why is there always a friend shift? I don't know, but it's not really there. Trust me, it's instrumental error. Okay, so why is there no friend shift detecting the orbit? Because the Earth is going in a straight path and interferometry can't detect linear velocity. Okay. 2004, I think. We detect linear velocity with the interferometer on the Earth to the extent that it's it's been patented. It's yeah, patented. that was done in a lab, but then even just GPS, like GPS works on range measurement equations. That's one like that's one way propagation of radio waves. Well, it, it says from what I read for the interferometer to detect the rotation, it must be rotating around its own axis on the body that it's on. So you don't think interferometry can detect like rotational, rotational motion? It, 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 it says the orbit is not a rotation is what it says. There you go. Okay. So now do we agree that the orbit is the earth going around the sun? Yeah. Okay. Do we agree that rotation by definition is something moving around the center axis of something else? No. It's uh, Okay. Well, can you define rotation for me? Yeah, spinning around an axis. Okay, the action of rotating around an axis or center. So, is the Earth rotating around the sun? No, it's orbiting the sun. Oh my God, okay. I'm about to quote Einstein. You're going to make me look this up. Einstein called the orbit a rotation in his paper. Well, I, I'm, I'll be interested in reading that. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you're right, though. That's the answer. It's not a rotation. Well, how does that work if it's not a rotation? Because by definition, if one object is moving around in a circle over and over, going around a center point, that's a rotation by definition. They're saying, oh, well, the Earth does that, but it's an orbit, not a rotation. And that's because they say, the Earth is actually going in a straight path. It's going in a straight path and a curved path. From the Earth, it's just going straight. To see the curve, you're going to have to go to another reference frame. 
So on the Earth, you're not going to detect the rotation because from the Earth, it's not a rotation. It's just a straight path. It's just free falling through curved space time, which is a geodesic path. That is the answer. Newton said that the Earth is rotating around the sun, and there's actually a force acting directly on it to cause it to move around the sun. Even worse, he said that that force acts instantly. It's crazy, bro. Like, I'm just saying, it's a, if you want to believe the Earth orbits around the sun, bro, go for it. But, like, don't lie. Don't trick yourself, bro. Don't trick yourself and think that Newton still works and the Earth orbit claim still works together. They don't. I mean, that's a hundred years old. Do you think they changed all of physics because they were bored? This is the, the greatest failed experiment ever. That's what it's called. Anyway, I'm like ranting. I just don't get it. I've tried to say it every way I can think of. I'll find Einstein saying it, though. And I've covered this paper in depth on my channel, bro. You never watch it, Leftling? Is my channel too boring for you? Has any interferometer ever been put on a plane, train, or horse and buggy and actually been measured and shown that it can register linear velocity at a known linear velocity? Yeah, I don't know. What's that? I don't know. Well, if it's never been shown that it actually works that way, then isn't it a little bit fallacious to assume that if it shows zero that it's... What? There is no, it ha what? no, it has been shown to detect linear velocity. But, you asked about a plane. Well, anything where you where we knew what the linear velocity was. Yes. Independent. Okay. Well, could you link me to that? Yeah, so sure, brother. Okay, I got you, brother. How fast did they have it going? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. And this is what I'm saying. This is this is just the cherry on the top, right? Let's like, first of all, Newtonian mechanics cannot be true if the Earth orbits the sun. Period. Okay, that's because Einstein claimed that it's a linear velocity. That's why you can't detect it. Directly contrary to Newton. Now the second subject is even that claim is wrong because you can detect linear velocity with interferometry. So I'll find you the paper, of my dude. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This whole con conversation is so strange to me because I just stationary and it doesn't move. And I just don't get it why people want to argue and claim all these emotions and, and forces and various different things, but it's... None of that makes any sense to me. It's I just I just don't get why people think that those things because it's it feels stationary. It looks I mean everything about where we live says no motion, stationary. There's motion above us. The stars move, rotate above us, but the Earth and the land and the mass, or whatever you want to call it, where we live, it's motionless. In my hey, real opinion. fast. Sorry, brother, real fast. Uh, Toby, are yeah. you in here? T Toby, where do you go in EndNote to like copy the full citation? Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. Highlight it. Um, control K. Um, Wait, what is it? What is it? Look who's in here. What's up? Highlight it and press Control K. My guy. And then wow, control some what? Ears were burning. Oh, control V. Got it. Yeah. My man. Um, there's the citation in the paper, Jesse. So, dude, yeah, what do you think about the sound? This is crazy, bro, because this is my new favorite argument. 
I don't know if you've been here for a minute, but the whole like I'm gonna say it really fast because I know you can follow it right, but like um, you can't claim that Newton is correct and that the Earth is orbiting the Sun at the same time, right? Because Michelson Morley literally debunked Newton if the Earth is orbiting. Uh, you you know obviously because uh, you claim that a, a object will continue in a straight path unless an external or outside force acts upon it, which would of course cause an interference pattern because you would detect that outside force on the Earth itself. That's where Einstein comes in and says, "Oh, it's not actually curving with an external force; it's actually." still traveling straight with linear velocity only. It's just free-falling through a geodesic path of curved space-time. Therefore, from the reference frame of the Earth, it's going straight in a straight line. So you wouldn't detect the linear velocity with interferometry, which is why you can't detect the Earth's orbit. And if Newton was correct, you would have an external force acting on the Earth from the Earth's reference point, actually curving it literally. Therefore, you would detect it. Therefore, they had to come in and save the day with Einstein. So you could literally, and quite objectively, cannot claim newtonian gravity and the earth is orbiting the sun at the same time yeah so when you put it like that it's so obviously arbitrarily ad hoc that it's in like a geodesic like that right yeah especially when they try to then go and claim rotation of the earth for the actual measurable effect like it's just absolutely incoherent yeah and I'm going to I'm going to compliment that argument dude. So you know how they say and this is in regards to how oh all motions actually you know traveling along the curvature of space time or whatever, right? So in in regards to absolute velocity, right? So GPS satellites, right, that are so-called proof of relativity and all these things. Did you know that they're that the that there's a, a retardation rate and the clock's proportional to their velocity? So <clears throat> the way that they correct the to correct the atomic clocks and satellites, you know, so-called, right, as they're free-falling around the Earth in orbit. So in their model, the free-fall orbit of a satellite is an inertial frame, right? It's falling in a gravitational well, blah, 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 right? So it shouldn't be able, it shouldn't have any uh, uh, reference to its velocity or anything like that, right? But the clock inside of it uh, retards proportional to the velocity, right? So they sagnet correct it, right? So the same equation that predicts the sagnet effect Right, so the length, uh, the distance of the area traveled, or for light, and then the, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the angular velocity or linear velocity, right? So as Wang showed, linear velocity is equally equivalent. So the clocks account for their own velocity relative to the ECI, to the center of the ECI reference frame. Well, the center of the ECI reference frame is a mathematical concept. It's not, your absolute velocity wouldn't be relative to a mathematical construct. That's, re- that's retarded. It's it's literally proportional to the to your velocity uh, through the ether wind. So that's how they that's how they correct their clocks, man. Correction twenty two. And, right? and and yeah, and and exactly. And in addition to that, if the orbital velocities existed, right, like the thirty kilometers a second and all that shit. So when these satellites in orbit, when they're when they're parallel and perpendicular to the uh, for, to those planes of motion, they would have to account for those velocities right if they're making velocity corrections so these clocks isn't it it's uh oddly enough right they don't desynchronize at any uh there's no like uh anomalous desynchronizations where they're in line with these orbits so they're all uh you know accounting for their own velocity relative to the ether wind and they're telling everyone that they're accounting for the relative velocity relative to a coordinate system crazy Wow, bro. Yep. And it gets even worse than that, too. So, uh, you know how all reference frames are supposed to be equally valid? So this is in regards to the satellite orbits, right? So you know how we see them on their uh, elliptical paths or whatever, right? So if you were on another reference frame somewhere else in the solar system, Mars, for example, you wouldn't see uh, the same kind of orbital path that we do. You would see, the, like, the, the true, the equal uh, in all reference frame motion, right? you would see that they're traveling along a curve. So they're instead of an elliptical orbit, it would be like a uh, kind of like a, I guess like a semicircle, really not really completing a circle, just following a curve. Right. And that velocity, like the way that that works, like the, um, the change in speed to complete that orbit, right. Isn't accounted for. Right. Like, so they only, they're, they're specifically synced to the, to a geocentric, a geocentric frame. And they sync the clocks to the stars. So, and they correct for the absolute velocity through absolute space. What's up? Damn. What do you ballers think about that, bro? 
I just want to know <laughs> if I can put this contraption in the back of a hearse and find out how fast the hearse is going with this contraption. Remember when I was talking about like the men in black gun, uh, pin? Yeah. yeah. Like, did you listen so, to anything Alan he, said? Yeah. So in so in the trial and error experiments, right, the disaster of Heffel and Keating, right? After that, there was another one done where they took atomic clocks up and down the East Coast using trucks, and they, yeah, they had that. That's the that's with the uh, the key figuration right there where they figure out figured <laughs> out they had to account for the velocity of the trucks moving the craft. Yep, and that's fourteen it. nanosecond delay or whatever, right? Yep. Well, that was actually in regards to a separate one, but that one, in combination with the truck one, is where they were like, "Okay, that's how we do it," and then they confirmed that with the uh, with the signal one that you just that you were that, that you with were just play, referencing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So hey, it's an the- experimental fact, dog. <laughs> that they add that there's an absolute velocity measurable like forget about wang's uh um patent or whatever right oh the, it doesn't exist we don't know where it's at fuck that right a motherfucking satellite corrects for that shit in their own math according to them and their own manuals and uh, their own engineering standards and all that shit according to them they do it that's rough bro what, what do you want to say you jesse I'm still waiting for an answer for my question. Oh my god, dude! I swear, you're like, if you're not paid to be here, bro. Yeah, I just put them on like ten percent volume, dude. Zero impact. How much are you paid to be here? But it's a, it's an honest question. Can this device, this fiber optic loop and conveyor belt thing, be put in the back of a hearse and measure the linear velocity of the hearse? According to Wing's patent, yes. Do any of us know? How that patent's been used by the military, how large the apparatus is, or what degree of precision it has, no. Do I, hey, uh, do you guys know how fast it was uh, of a velocity it detected? Uh, it was down to, what was it, nano, nanometer or uh, micrometer per second, or what, I believe? Per second. Wow. So yeah, in theory, you should be able to do it then. It would be theory, the most yeah, precise measuring how device. Big it is or, you know, how much it costs to build. You should be able to throw it on a plane, right? I mean, think about it. If, if, if we replicate that and throw it on, like, a fighter jet, I mean, that's GG's, right? That's just complete. Yeah, you can just well, you can yeah. literally take it on a commercial craft, possibly, yeah, right? Just fighter just, jet's way cooler. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be able to measure absolute distances. But but yeah, maybe you would want more space. We could we could literally charter a plane if we can get this thing replicated for you know film in 4K. If you detect linear velocity, your entire religion is over. You guys know that, right? The God one, yeah. or no, the globe one. I you know what's funny is I think if we did that, it would take them a year to even understand how it debunks their belief. Like, I, I'm not trying to sound ugly. Like, I'm not saying you guys are stupid. I'm not. I'm just saying that, like, Cogdis is crazy, bro. Like, you, you know what I mean? And real fast, just for the ballers in here, man, I got Einstein pulled up for you. The second class of facts to which we have alluded has reference to the question whether or not the motion of the Earth in space can be made perceptible in terrestrial experiments. Uh, do we have to, like, we have to like interpret all the sentences like he's saying as to the question of whether or not we can detect the assumed orbit of the earth through space with any experiment on the earth. We've already remarked that every attempt to do this was a negative result before I put my theory of relativity forward. It was very difficult to reconcile these negative results for reasons to now be discussed. So what are we about to discuss? Reasons why it was difficult to explain how you can't measure the Earth's orbit until Einstein proposed space time. Space time. Are you lagging? No. Are you? The, oh, the inherent voice, the voice slowed down quite a bit. It's like, yeah, I was making sure we really were on the same page here. Um, 
the the inherited prejudice about time and space did not allow any doubt to arise as to the prime importance of the Galilei transformation for changing over from one body of reference to another. Long story short, the interpretation of time and space being absolute was a problem. He had to change that because if time and space was absolute, the Earth's not orbiting through space. Okay, I come down here. He says, in one of the most notable of these attempts, what attempts? What attempts? Oh, all attempts okay, of this. Oh, to detect the motion of the Earth. Okay. All of them. So this is one of them because he says all of the attempts. And it says, in one of the most notable attempts. In what the ballers always say here, like McLooney tunes and FTFE, they just repeat this. No, when Einstein said that, he was only talking about Mickelson Morley. That's not true. He says all of the attempts and in one of the most notable of all of these attempts. Okay. Anyway, Mickelson devised a method which appears as though it must be decisive. Then he describes Mickelson Morley, right? Imagine the two mirrors on a rigid body. You shoot one light beam, you split it, then it hits a mirror and reflects, then they reflect back, they combine back in the center, and then go to the receiver. Okay, a ray of light passes at a perfectly definite time to pass from one mirror to the other and back again if the whole system is at rest with respect to the ether. It is found by calculation, however, that a slightly different time, T prime, is required for this process if the body together with the mirrors be moving relatively to the ether. Okay. And uh, so let's keep reading it. And yet another point, it is shown by calculation that for a given velocity, V, with reference to the ether, this time, T prime, is different when the body is moving perpendicularly to the planes of the mirrors from the resulting when the motion is parallel to these planes. Okay, here's the important part. Ballers. Although the estimated difference between these two times is exceedingly small, meaning that the, the actual interference pattern from the light would be really small because the time period itself is very small. It's just 30 kilometers per second flying through space. So although the estimated difference between these two times is exceedingly small, Mickelson and Morley performed an experiment involving interference in which this difference should have been clearly detectable. But the experiment gave a negative result, a fact very perplexing to physicists. Okay, what did the physicists think was true at the time? Newtonian gravity. They thought that there was absolute space and that it was fixed. They thought that Newton's laws of motions were true and that there must be a force acting on the Earth to cause it to orbit around the sun. In fact, Newtonian gravity claims that there's an instantaneous action at a distance. And that's why everyone thought there had to be an ether. How can you have instantaneous action at a distance unless you have some type of medium connecting the two bodies with mutual contact? Okay. So, Mickelson and Morley performed an experiment with interference. It should have been detectable, but the experiment gave a negative result, which was very perplexing to physicists. Lorenz and Fitzgerald rescued the theory from this difficulty. Hmm. Okay, sorry. Um, from this difficulty, by assuming that the motion of the body relative to the ether produces a contraction of the body in the direction of motion, the amount of contraction being just sufficient to compensate for the difference in time mentioned above. Meaning, miraculously, the actual apparatus contracted just the perfect amount to make it look like the earth was not moving. This is where the Glober says, but that's just when they're talking about the ether and Lorentz was talking about the ether. That's right. But comparison with the discussion in section 12 shows that from the standpoint also of the theory of relativity, this solution of the difficulty was the right one. Solution of what difficulty? Uh, 
the experiment gave a negative result when it should have showed an interference that was clearly detectable, although exceedingly small, because the Earth was supposedly moving. Lorentz and Fitzgerald rescued this theory from this difficulty by assuming contraction in the direction of motion. So the difficulty is that it didn't detect it. Then he says, comparison to the discussion in section 12 shows that from the standpoint also of the theory of relativity, this solution of the difficulty, what was the solution? That the body contracted just the right amount to make it look like the earth wasn't moving was the right one. So, so, so wait a minute, Austin, are you telling me that he just replaced the mechanism of ether contraction with space time contraction? That's correct. And then from that, they, uh, so, so you're saying from that, they just, they just uniformly started using that, uh, Symmetry, that mathematic system, right, to, uh, to, to conform all reference frames to the speed of light via contraction mechanism, via hyperbolic that, curvature? Yeah, that's also correct, Alan. You're crushing, brother. Oh, wow. Wow, that's, man. That's, that's really interesting. <laughs> and here, the contraction of moving bodies follows from the two fundamental principles of the theory. Oh, but but no. No, relativity doesn't claim that the Michelson Morley apparatus contracted though. Even though Einstein literally wrote the theory because of that and says point blank that it is the same, it's also correct using relativity and that the cause of the contraction of the moving body follows from the two fundamental principles of his theory of relativity. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on a second. So you're telling me that when they did the Michelson-Morley experiment and they got a friend shift that corresponded to a proportional velocity <clears throat> of six kilometers to seven kilometers a second, right? And then they said, well, that's a null, right? Speed of light's the same, even though it was outside of their air tolerance, right? Because they just needed, they needed that 30 kilometers, right? So you're saying they, they, they nulled that. And then when relativity came around, when relativity came knocking, they were like, okay, bet. That's actually the answer. And the, and the displacement we saw was due to contraction? Yeah. Yep. Wow. So they denied it and then co-opted it. In the same uh, mathematical framework. That's to right. Re to, to reify a presupposition of motion where it doesn't exist? Yeah, and Alan, what I'm confused about is all these ballers keep telling me that relativity had nothing to do with Michelson-Morley and that they didn't care about that because it just disproved the ether. Well, how come Einstein was writing his wife uh, in, in 1989 saying, hey, baby, uh, I gotta, I gotta uh, take a break and study on uh, your boy Lorenz and uh, and Mickelson Morley, and uh, he had some interesting thoughts on that, and also uh, Paul Giroud's book on optics. I gotta study hard and come up with a mm. new theory just to save everyone. Wow! And he even said point blank that rel special relativity, the thing that the first path that led him to that theory was Mickelson Morley. So yeah, I mean, if 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 there are any Globers here that take that position, I'd be curious to know. Where you think then that Albert Einstein derived the special relativity from? Like what Good experiment? Question. Good They're not even listening right now. They're not what listening. What citations are available Jesse's in, in here, Einstein's 1905 in paper? Yeah, but they're typing in the chat. They're not listening. Like they're not actually listening. They this is where that, really? they got men in black and Left they had to check Jesse, out. You guys want to answer? <laughs> where did That's where insane, did Albert Einstein? Bro. What experiment did Albert Einstein use to derive special relativity? That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> it's like a movie. So this then, how crazy. do you know special relativity is true? Jesse, do you care if we make a cartoon with you as the main character? Do we have your uh, blessing? That wouldn't make sense either. <laughs> it, do, it suddenly doesn't make sense when you actually have to come up against the cold hard truth. It's like it's just the cog just just like shorts you out, doesn't it? 
Yeah, I mean, they would have completely remained silent until you put them on the spot. Like, as I'm saying, you guys are going to sit in here and just pretend not to hear it? I mean, I'm sitting here showing the paper. Well, the the thing is, you ignore the the questions we have and go on reading pages and pages that isn't answering our questions. So are you surprised if we tune out? You're asking about what, her. Hey, what, what question did you ask that we didn't answer? Well, my question is, if the Michelson Morley interferometer has never actually been demonstrated to be able to uh, measure absolute linear velocity, then how could its lack of showing absolute linear velocity be a proof against absolute linear velocity? That's called a straw man fallacy. So when did someone claim that? Not to mention, he's just affirming the consequent. Like, we're asking for proof of relativity or general relativity. And you're saying, well, if, if general relativity is true, then don't worry about it. But we were asking for you to quantify it somehow, right? Well, yeah. Wait, wait, so let's, let's make, sure we, make, make sure we don't lose this here. He's basically saying that we skipped over his question and then went on. And what we really did was we took a step back to really even address the fact that you had to come up with relativity for the express purpose of explaining Mickelson Morley from your paradigm, which almost all of you deny. But we, of course, specifically addressed the linear velocity thing. You made up a new question and added a bunch of stuff to it and then worked in a straw man right then, claiming that we ignored your question, but you just made it up. First, you said, can you put the linear interferometer on like a, a hearse or a plane and detect it? And then we discussed back and forth what, what, uh, how sensitive the measurement was. And we said, yes, in theory, you should be able to do that. And it was, in fact, it done in a test detecting linear velocity. You, we answered your question specifically. Then we went on. No, oh, then we went on talking about how we're going to address the misinformation that you guys all say that relativity had nothing to do with Mickelson Morley. Right. Now, I thought I thought that Toby just uh, explained that a few minutes ago that there was not any demonstration of an absolute linear speedometer mechanism that was actually shown to work. No, no. Said, I dropped you the paper you asked for showing it specifically working. That you did it didn't. In 2003, he did it in 2004, and then he got a patent made on it. And like I also said, GPS works fundamentally on this exact concept. And you asked for the paper because I told you that it has been done. You said, really? I'd love to see that. So then I dropped the paper, tagged you, or didn't tag you, but told you, and then dropped the actual citation. And now you're saying, we didn't do that, and we just ignored your question. But what you Are you gave, gaslighting, Jesse? It's the second consecutive Fib. What you gave me was a something. He's that a measured, fibber. What you, you fibber. gave me was something that measured a, a relative velocity between two different parts of the same contraption. That's different than measuring absolute velocity, right? There's no such thing as absolute velocity in your paradigm. But you're claiming that the Michelson Morley uh, interferometer does measure w would measure absolute velocity. If There's there no such right? thing as absolute velocity in your paradigm. Are you not claiming that that Michelson Morley interferometer should measure the Earth's orbital uh, linear velocity if there was some? That is an absolute in your paradigm. But are you making that claim? It is an absolute in your paradigm. You just made up another fib claiming we said the word absolute, but we I, now I, I know that Alan was talking about it because in reality it would be absolute. We're talking about from your paradigm's perspective, you claim you don't detect the Earth's orbit because it can't, interferometry can't detect linear velocity. We then show a test doing that. And of course, the whole test is in relation to an absolute fixed frame of a stationary lab frame in reality. But there is no such thing as absolute velocity in your paradigm. So then this would be perfectly analogous to detecting the Earth's orbit in your paradigm since both would be relative linear velocity. Isn't that right, Jesse? 
unless the instrument that you're using doesn't actually work the way you presume it would. Okay, so we've <laughs> devolved all the way to nah, -uh, the instrument must not work that way. So can you admit that all these previous things you said were just tactics and you were tactically twisting what we actually said and then putting words in our mouth and trying to avoid it. When in reality, you knew you just have to say that this test must be wrong. So are you agreeing that if this test is correct, that the interpretation is also correct, that the way that we interpret the mechanism to work, as well as the person who designed it and wrote the paper, if that is correct, then that would actually debunk the claim that you can't detect the Earth's orbit because it is relative linear velocity, since this instrument would be doing that very thing. Um, could, could you make that as a question, if you want an answer? Could you answer Toby's earlier question? Do you one? want to repeat it again, Toby? What allowed what Einstein to derive spell best? What? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course, well, dude. Yeah, he's of course answer not going to answer please. that. Well, please Jesse. answer that, Jesse. Seriously, how do you think? Like, where did special relativity come from? You can't just like magically poop it out, right? Like, you got to give us an answer. Where did it come from? Why, why do you think he came up with that? I don't understand special relativity much better than you do, man. I I don't know. Oh, he understands that better than you do. Doesn't that bother you a bit or something? Like, 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 I, like, Witsit has laid out very explicitly why that's impaired. Like, that's you have to have that in your model. Even like, we already are showing you that you can measure linear velocity, but even give, even if without that, if we even if we give you that somehow magically that's not being measured, then you still have this rotation problem. And so we still would be able to measure the orbit of the Earth without relativity. But you have to have relativity to show that we have this magical geodesic path that we travel on. That's, it's a linear motion, even though it's actually on a geodesic that's moving, right? Yeah, Hubble said it. Hubble said it best. In order to avoid the, the horror of a fixed position, right? Mm -hmm. Yo, what's it? <clears throat> Yo, what's it? Yeah. Can you pull up those two pictures that I just posted uh, real quick? Yeah. And what's crazy is you're like, he asked you, why did, what caused Einstein to come up with it? We literally just know. read Einstein explaining it. And then you say, I don't know much about relativity. <laughs> That's so what wild to me. Oh, dude. Have you tried making something up, Jesse? What's that? Again, he doesn't have to make anything up. Yeah. Again, he doesn't have to make anything up because we just read the words of Einstein expressly explaining the answer <laughs> with a share screen. <laughs> this is it's actually all insane. just gaslighting tactics. That's Jesse, so good. are you not reading the paper that we just went through? Are you not paying attention? I'm. I'm still stuck on the simple stuff, which I can't get a coherent wow. answer to. So we have given specific answers, those? and now you're reverting back to lying, claiming that we didn't give you an answer. What was our answer? Well, uh, one one of you said that we that a Michelson Morley interferometer should show linear velocity, and another one said that he no, we did it. No, we did it. No, we did it. Oh, so are we agree agreeing that a Michelson, a Morley? Dude, Jesse, I know for a, I know for a fact you know what you're doing. Yeah, he's definitely being a sophist right now. Like I know for a fact that you know what you're doing for a 100 percent fact. But look, I'm just gonna expose you again. The, I can just clip you out. Maybe we should just start clipping you out and humiliating you. We're just gonna be this disingenuous with us, right? So, we brought up that a test had been done, for example, in 2004, where linear velocity was detected with interferometry, right? Because first you said, as I was explaining the whole situation that you guys can't use Newton anymore and you guys all went silent, right? Then you ended up saying, well, could I put this interferometer on a plane or a hearse or a train and then detect linear velocity? Then we pointed out, you, then you asked, has it ever been done? Because if it's never been done, then how can you guys claim to know that it would detect it? And I said, oh, it has been done. You said, has it? I said, yes. 
And he said, I, I, you said, I would love to see that. But it's the second time I've had to recant this conversation. It's ridiculous. I said, no problem. I'll drop you the paper. I then go through my PDFs, get the paper, give you the citation, tell you that I dropped it. And then you started asking questions about it, right? You asked again, would we be able to put it on a plane or whatever? Then Alan, Toby, and myself discussed exactly what speed of linear velocity it was detecting. It was very small. So we said, yes, in theory, you certainly should be able to put this instrument on all of those objects and detect linear velocity, right? And it's even been patented. And then we even talked about, I wonder if we can replicate the instrument and then actually charter a plane and do it. So we answered your claims, your, your question specifically. We said that the test has been done. Then a second ago, you said, oh, unless your interpretation of the instrument's wrong, now you looped back to saying we never answered your question and that we claimed that the Mickelson-Morley detected linear velocity or should have, when actually we're talking about a modern test. So I asked for evidence that the interferometer had shown absolute linear velocity, as in it would as if it was on a plane or a train, and you said in theory it should be able to. Your theory is not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in whether it's actually been shown. Does that make sense? If it's been shown, why do you have to say in theory it could show it? Right? Dude, it's like, it's so frustrating, bro. It was so much better here when you just stopped coming, right? But, okay, so I actually, of course, said that it has specifically been detected. You said, oh, I want absolute, not relative. <laughs> and I had to inform you of your own belief system. There is no such thing as absolute linear velocity in your belief system. It's all relative. So this would be directly analogous to the Earth's orbit or interferometry trying to detect Earth's orbit because it's all relative in your paradigm. There's no such thing as absolute linear velocity. Then you repeated it, then I had to repeat it, then you repeated it, then I had to repeat it, then you just change the subject. Okay? So, so that wait, 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 wait. That's what that's what actually happened, right? So whenever we point out that it has detected linear velocity. You bring up Michael Smorley as a diversion on purpose to avoid this test. And whenever I said, in theory, we're saying we don't have an actual test where they put it on specifically what you're asking for, a plane or a train. We do, however, have an experiment with very precise measurement that was done more than once, detecting linear velocity. We dropped you the paper that you haven't read, right? So when I said in theory, it is, well, certainly in theory, it would work on a plane as well if it's detecting smaller speeds of linear velocity in this test. So that's what I meant by in theory. You knew that's what I meant. You know what we've been saying this whole time. You are actually putting all of your life force and energy into trying to use tactics, Jesse. It's super weird. Why? Um, it's very obvious too, bro. Well, are you talking about the paper that has the conveyor belt and stuff? Yeah. Generalized Sagnac effect. Do you want Alan to explain it to you? Are you watching my are you looking at my screen? Oh, yeah, that, go ahead. Alan wanted you to pull up those pictures. Go for it. Okay, those are Yeah, from, so this like, isn't from the Wang experiment though. This uh, is uh, just uh, from Jesse this is just been, Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. Well, this is from the past. This guy is right? such a joke. Is there is there any evidence that you can show me of this actually working? Because people file patents all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay. That don't work in hopes yeah. that someday so, somebody figures it out. And then the dude, guy we just showed it. you the actual paper of the experiment. Like, we just showed you the actual. Pa uh, do you want to get muted with your color commentary? Right. With your color commentary? J Jesse, we just showed you the actual paper of the experiment that had been done, right? So we didn't just show you a patent, did we, Jesse? You mean the one with the conveyor belt? We showed you a paper discussing an actual physical experiment that was done in reality, not just a patent. Isn't that correct, Jesse? Are you talking about the one with the conveyor belt and the loop of fiber on the wheel? Answer my question, dude. You just said anyone can file a patent, but we didn't just show you a patent. We showed you an actual paper talking about an experiment that was done. Isn't that correct, Jesse? I'm not sure which you gave me several papers. One of them was a patent and one was a not. And I'm not sure which one you're talking about. The one oh, on your Well, if right I'm now, saying that one of them was a paper of if I'm saying one of them was a paper about an experiment, not a patent, Everyone and then <laughs> then it would probably be the one that's not the patent, huh, Jesse? Everyone saw that just now, dude. This is insane, bro. Okay, so the one with the conveyor belt 
has not been shown to be capable of measuring the velocity of, say, a train or a plane or anything. It was measuring the difference in velocity between the main unit and the, the loop of fiber, right? So can interferometry be used to detect linear velocity? Only relative linear velocity. It's always Isn't linear. all linear velocity relative in your paradigm? Well, that's irrelevant. It, <laughs> no, it's not, dude. What are you talking about, bro? See, I can I can tell by the way it's three against one cut. No, that one dude, off. you're you're not. Uh, why don't you say you don't know instead? Because it is your in your paradigm. Like there is no absolute velocity. Just so, answer the question: Is there linear velocity in your paradigm? Yes or no? Absolutely. Is there absolute? There is. There's that. Okay. Can you give us an well, example? No, I, was, I answered what you asked. Okay, is there absolute after a, is, is there absolute linear velocity in your paradigm, yes or no? That would be complex to try to describe in a yes or no answer. So Is there is there absolute linear what? velocity in your paradigm, yes or no? Probably not in the full universal scale, but compared to the sun there would be uh, absolute linear velocity compared to the sun. Compared to the sun is a statement of relativity, right? Relative to the sun, which is specifically relative, not absolute, isn't it, Jesse? But this isn't even about my paradigm. This is about <laughs> your paradigm and your claim that the interferometer didn't show velocity, so therefore there is none, right? Wait, right, Jesse, Jesse, I asked you if uh, absolute linear velocity exists in your paradigm, and you said, yes, compared to the sun, which would be linear velocity relative to the sun, so, again, is there absolute linear velocity in your paradigm, Jesse? On Earth, there would be, relative to the sun. It's not well, I, absolute if it's relative to the sun. Look, I, I, I see the word game you're playing here, but it's completely just a diversion tactic. The, the oh, real, my God. The, the real dude, the ultimate gaslight, bro. I know, yeah, dude. That's nuts, bro. Yo, I, I see what you were talking about, man. And yeah, that, this is why that's why I hit him. The, that's nuts. The real that's question, actually crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. The real question is whether we have anything that has been shown to be able to measure velocity in a self-contained black box without mm -hmm. referencing anything else, like that patent you have on your screen claims. Yeah, an atomic to, clock. Yeah, can you let him explain it real quick? Yeah, but just one time for the room, right? There's not actually just a patent. There's a test. Here's a screenshot from it. It says in this study. It's an experiment that they did. We found that in a light waveguide loop consisting of linearly and circularly moving segments, any segment of the loop contributes to the phase difference between two counter-propagating light beams in the loop, meaning even the linear segment also directly contributed to the phase difference. Well, that's in that rotating loop on the wheels, right? No, no. There's the circularly moving segment and the linear segment. Right, and this isn't just a patent. This is an experiment that was done. Okay, so now that your sophistry's been exposed, you, Alan, if you want to discuss the patent, I have the right images pulled up, right? Yeah, yeah. So the image on the pull up the other one real quick. Okay, so this is an atomic clock, right? And this retards proportionally to the velocity of the craft, right? So they have to they have to account for that velocity delay um, in the. Uh, in the clock to keep it in sync right so that right and that's happening in absolute right there's no uh, uh, there's no speedometer on it it's not it just has to be that way because of the electromagnetic retardation that's happening um inside of the that's why they're correcting for the sagnac effect right so if you could pull up the patent now the other image right so that's wang's device so that's a single light loop that's or a single light beam that's split that's that's do it's doing the same thing conceptually right so uh there's no reason why it wouldn't work it happened it, it it works for everything man like it's literally happens in satellites and they explicitly don't account for the relative velocity of the sun right like they only account for side like what they call sidereal rotation right so what you would call earth rotation what we would call ether wind right they account for a a, a, a retardation that correspond that fluctuates with the stars right so not Earth rotation with the stars, and what was the other one, Toby? The lunar, the sidereal uh, lunar stuff with the pendulums. Yeah, uh, uh, Maurice Elias's pendulum 
had uh, like track the sidereal motion of the moon. Yeah, we we're only getting fluctuations with things that correspond in the sky. So nothing, uh, nothing that uh, that indicates we're orbiting around a sun or that the sun's orbiting around the center of a black hole in, in the galaxy of the Milky Way, and that that and that that Milky Way is moving relative to the cosmic microwave background. None of those planes of motion exist in the clock corrections for GPS. Boom. That was that was the mic drop right there. Jesse, respond. Jesse, respond to Alan directly, please. What's it? Oh my, oh my god. god! Oh I say, my I say god! We, I say we literally make him respond or disengage. I agree. So well, did you not hear any of it? Are you listening? You're not even engaged to begin with. Did you not hear any of it? Did you not hear any of it? Dude, I actually took the time to painfully and redundantly repeat myself over and over and over to engage with you despite the overt bad faith. Okay, so your gaslighting isn't going to work and only on the internet are you even able to do stuff like that. So if you are so sure that this isn't a thing, can you address what Alan just laid out, please? No, I wasn't listening. Oh boy! Look, you guys. I love this guy. You, well, you guys, it's, look, luckily, <laughs> it's like luckily, a cartoon, yeah, dude. Yeah, luckily, Earth Awakenings is streamed on several platforms, so you can go ahead and check that replay and hit us back when you feel like you have an answer. And this oh, all got us idea. away. This all got us away from the fact that I just went through Einstein's paper, showing point blank that he says that there is a contraction and that the contraction of the apparatus that contracted in the direction of motion just sufficiently enough to compensate for the missing time difference, just the right amount, that from the theory of relativity standpoint, that solution to the difficulty of not detecting the Earth's orbit is the right one also, right? And that point blank, the reason that it's he's even proposing it is to explain the Mickelson-Morley experiment as he opens the section up by saying that many attempts have been made to try to detect the motion of the Earth terrestrially, and all of them have been negative. And before I put my theory of relativity forward, it was very difficult to become reconciled with these negative results. In one of the most notable of these attempts, Mickelson-Morley, we didn't detect the orbit of the Earth using interferometry, right? So when you guys run around and say that re relativity had nothing to do with Michelson-Morley, Michelson-Morley just disproved the ether, that the apparatus doesn't contract according to relativity, that relativity doesn't have to do anything to explain Michelson-Morley at all, those are all patently wrong claims. You guys should... Stop saying them. If you're actually interested in truth, you wouldn't continue to say them anyway, right? He's not listening anymore. I was gonna. I was gonna say too. Like sometimes, when, you know, when you're engaging with Jesse, and then he, for for whatever reason, he just like says, "Oh, I wasn't listening." I, I just want to remind everybody, like, well, that's okay, because it's not even for him to hear it. It's for the audience, because that's where that's who's learning stuff here. Jesse's never going to listen to you. Even when he does hear you, he's never going to listen to what you're saying. So it's not even Max. for him at this point. Well, that's being just, disingenuous. Dude, he was yeah, like, no, 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 for like three I, days I while we were like all that. going over this. If, like he's bro, seen all this, heard all these arguments, knows it Jesse, all in detail, if I was, and he's if just I was pretending right now. It's insane. Yeah, dude. If I would, ex if I took the time to to painfully <laughs> explain this to you, I would want you to be listening. I would feel like that's very rude, at the very oh, least. Yeah, I think I'm not it's... explaining it to him, bro. Like it's it is for the audience, like apocryphon saying. Yeah, of it's course. For, yeah. It's for the it's for the lads. Right. Is it a right. social like, thing? Is it a social thing, Jesse, or is it too hard to uh, to swallow the pill that's in front of you? May I? Oh, cool. Thank you. So, yeah, w when you're talking with someone, if if you just ignore the fact that they've got questions that don't make sense, that, that if you're saying things that don't make sense to them, and you just ignore that and just charge on ahead and keep on going and just start rambling on about and reading whole papers, if you don't care enough about the person you're talking to to make sure they're tracking with you, then you're the one that's being rude. You're the one that doesn't care, and you can't blame them if they tune out. If you just leave them behind, right? But just, dude, it's, I, it's, it's, I, it's, it's, 
if your questions are irrelevant, dude, and not pertinent to the topic, like how 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 is that any way for anyone to like move forward in trying to help? Oh, dude, I broke down each part of it very slowly. I said we're gonna make sure everyone understands it. We're going to you know make sure that we relay it in the simplest terms possible. So what you just said was just again patently untrue. Everything you're saying is gaslighting and untrue. So anyway, the reason I pulled this paper up was for left lane. So here it is right here. It says point blank. And again, I'm sharing the screen. This is from special theory of relativity section. For owing to the alteration in direction of the velocity of rotation of the earth in the course of a year, the earth cannot be at rest relative to the hypo hypothetical system K throughout the whole year. So this is him point blank saying, for owing, and we'll, we'll even go up a little bit. If the principle of relativity were not valid, we should therefore expect that the direction of motion of the earth at any moment would enter into the laws of nature. <laughs> this dude just said, if the principle of relativity were not valid, then we should expect that the earth would actually adhere to the laws of nature. <laughs> dude. Okay, sorry. Uh, if the principle of relativity were not valid, we should therefore expect that the direction of motion of the Earth at any moment would enter into the laws of nature and also that physical systems and their behavior would be dependent on the orientation in space with respect to the Earth. Dude, is, is everyone following how insane of a statement that is? Anyway, it says right here, just so you know, Leflin, because you're going to say it's, uh, it's not a rotation. Right. For owing to the alteration and direction of the velocity of rotation of the Earth in the course of a year. That's talking about the orbit. It's, of course, a rotation. And here at the bottom, it says the word rotation was correctly changed to revolution in later editions by the commentator. Which goes to our point that they know that it is rotation by definition. They changed it to revolution or orbit when they redefined the orbit as actual free fall in a straight path. Okay? Which goes back to our whole point here. You cannot use Newtonian mechanics. Einsteinian mechanics literally changed the definition of the orbit to explain the results of Michelson Morley. Hey, Jesse, can right. I get a concession sure. on that, man? What's that? Do you understand that we cannot claim the Earth is orbiting around the sun and simultaneously claim Newtonian mechanics because Einsteinian mechanics was introduced to explain the michelson morley experiment, and it did so by specifically changing the Newtonian definition of an orbit to explain why we couldn't detect the Earth's motion. Are you asking me to play a word game? I'm I asking just... you... No, no. What is wrong with you, bro? It's not a word game. They had to change the claimed dynamic forces or lack of forces in your model to explain Michelson Morley. What's a word game? I... They got rid of Newtonian mechanics, replaced it with Einsteinian mechanics to explain the michelson morley experiment do you agree uh, I, I don't i don't trust a guy who can't work a tangent to um cor correctly represent uh, general relativity or even newtonian mechanics who wow. what i don't even know what to say <laughs> we have to, we can have we, can we just move on? paper up we right well, yeah, we can't. We can move on. I just wanted to make it well known that, like, to thoroughly expose that when I went around saying I don't engage with Jesse anymore because he is intentionally bad faith and he gaslights and he's tactically dishonest. And some people were like, "Oh, be be careful, bro! Don't call people dishonest." That I was well founded hey. in my assessment. <laughs> hey man, let's let's address this. Jesse, can men get pregnant? No. 
What? Fair enough. Um, Issa, doesn't that make it even worse? Yeah. So, it makes it even yeah, worse. Like that's in, in regards to the Wang experiment, <laughs> though, so it's actually not rel- measuring relative velocity to the linear or to the, any of the other segments of it, right? Because it's they call it the effective length segment. So the effective length segment is only the segment that's in motion. So it's actually the problem then becomes to um, to explain the situation and preserve the speed of light. Absolute space and time has to be invoked to preserve the total length of it traveled, right? So that they can just say, oh, well, there's a Doppler shift, but they can't explain the frequency shift, right? So that's where you get your boy Tartiglia and that other guy that um, that, that guy came in here and referenced, right? And they all have the same problem. Uh, well, we can explain it, you know, philosophically through invoking absolute space and time, right? Because of this linear segment debacle, right? Because it's not, because it's obviously not measuring the uh, um, a part relative to the stationary part, right? So, um, so we're so we have to invoke, you know, absolute space, blah blah blah, to, to philosophically even preserve the speed of light, right? And then from there, they can only transform <laughs> to a uh, geometrically convenient position to watch the to watch the motion uh, symmetrically. And then just just tell everyone, hey, the speed of light changed, and that's not an inertial frame. You know, don't look here or whatever, right? So Let's make sure everyone uh, understands this point too. Like, right? Like so, like that that Wang experiment is so bad because here's here's the real kicker with that, right? The lab frame predicts that there's going to be that the that time and everything's going to be the same, and the speed of light's going to change, and there's going to be a, there's going to be a fringe shift proportional to that, right? So the observer uh, on the, or, you know, the device, right? The, the, uh, the observer records the same thing. And there's a fringe shift proportional to that. So you know what that means? The time is in the lab frame is the same that was recorded in the experiment. So the only thing that could have possibly changed in that scenario is the speed of light. Hey, <laughs> special relativity disproven. Yeah, and it also says in the paper... In fact, the Sanyak result can be derived from this general equation. Like he's laying it out right there. It's literally a predictable Sanyak result. C plus V, C minus V, proportional velocity relative to the the absolute velocity of that uh that fiber optic waveguide loop. So yeah. Hey uh I don't wanna I don't wanna make it hey Jesse, are you listening? Yeah. I don't want to make, I don't want to sound like a dick or make it seem like you're being jumped on. But earlier I heard you say, correct me if I'm wrong, that you can't trust this guy because of the way he used a, a, an instrument, like he used it the wrong way, in your opinion. But I would say, I can say the same thing about you because you use theodolites a lot, but you use them incorrectly all the fucking time. And you make video after video after video. So, I mean, I guess I could kind of say the same thing about you. Like, why would I trust anything you put out? Because you use a theodolite taking 57 miles of an object away from you. And that's not the that's not even what they're used for, bro. That's not even their intentions. Did I respond to the aspersions? Uh, go ahead. So, first of all, I didn't say anything about him using instruments. I said he couldn't work a tangent. That's That's math. That's a mathematical thing. And... Oh, okay. I I missed that. I I did say. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought yeah. I thought you said something like a tool. Sorry about that. Well, like, dude, dude, can we not like? Can we not bring Jesse into like a n- totally new subject about the autolites, <laughs> dude? That yeah. sounds like absolute torture, bro. Like, I'm I'm sorry, but like, he if you know he he's not being honest about this thing. I I personally that's my vote. It's obviously up to the room. But I just cannot imagine something much worse than, <laughs> than allowing than question. allowing than allowing him to escape from all of this that he so desperately avoided and twisted, and then go on to something else. Right? I, yeah, I, it's I think probably better to stay problem. on it. Yeah, you're right. It's better to stay on that on what was being discussed so that it could be hammered out and addressed. I think so. Oh, I I think so. I mean, because I want Alan just made a very good point about this test and what the mainstream response is. It's not what Jesse said. It's not. Oh, it's re- it's relative, not absolute. That's not the mainstream response, right? And I want to. I hope that everyone understands what he's saying because it's very important. Like when he talked to I can science that, right? First he said, "Oh, this guy was just joking." Is that correct? He first said Dude. he was just joking. Said, said he was just yeah. joking and and was pl- and uh, was showing a mathematical prank. Okay, and then I'm guessing that you sent him 
a couple of the mainstream uh, papers trying to explain it away and that he then just absorbed their, their excuse. So the opposite actually. So we went on and talked to him and he was arguing um, from the philosophical standpoint, you know, invoking absolute space and time to preserve the total uh, length and time uh, traveled so that he could say that the speed of light's the same. But then he was like interpreting the, um, the Doppler shift, like the frequency shift. He was interpreting that as being equivalent to the fringe shift. And we're like, well, no, no, like there's actual, there's an actual fringe though that you can't explain unless you see plus V, right? Cause it's the ratio against the speed of light. Right. <clears throat> and he was he like, did not want to admit that. Like, and, he, and he, yeah, he could not like, that was a no go for him. So and that's crazy to watch. And that. then so, and then so after that, right. So we were like, okay, bet, you know, philosophical impasse, let's just call it quits. And then it devolved from that. Um, okay. But someone in the com, but someone in the comments actually posted uh, the Tartiglia paper and and it literally breaks it down. It go. It says the same thing we do. It's like so. Classical mechanics has no problem explaining this. It's a classical C plus V scenario. They can dis they can explain the fringe displacement. However, the fringe displacement's difficult for us to explain. So let me just uh, slide into this geometrically convenient position, right, where we uh, choose a cylindrical coordinate system that we're at the center of, and we'll watch the event happen symmetrically and deny the validity of that being an inertial frame, so we can explain the fringe, right? And that and that and that explanation in special relativity is retarded, right? So they don't like that one. That's why they have to take it to general relativity and treat it as an acceleration, so they can um, use conservation laws to get a proportional length contraction uh, to actually even attempt to explain the physicality of the fringes, guys. Like that's right, super so important here. So, they uh, so let's, a I want to make. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna say they they made a, a mathematical like math magical basically explanation using what is it called the Lorentz transformation to basically yeah. say that space and time contracted perfectly to change the speed of light but right? that's you only know, with it, gr and it's not using sr but like what i'm saying yeah. is i know this is going way too fast I, and i want everyone to understand it because this may seem some like like some really dense nuanced nerdy stuff and they're like ah bro like nah bro this is a huge deal if everyone understands this Dude, you can go dunk on any PhD physicist in the world, bro. This is the death of the heliocentric model. There's no way around it. T Toby so, and I did it on accident, bro. The guy spiraled. So let's make sure that we're on the same page here, right? So th it, this test, again, real quick recap. They did Michelson Morley. It didn't detect the orbit of the Earth. According to Newtonian mechanics, space was absolute and fixed. There, they, they also assume there was an ether because you can't even have Newtonian mechanics without an ether because it claims instantaneous action at a distance. Right. So everyone thought there was an ether. Everyone thought that space was absolute and fixed. And everyone thought Newtonian gravity was true. That mass attracts mass and that gravity is a force that's pulling objects around other objects. And that we were being pulled around the sun because we would have kept going in a straight path but there was a force acting on the earth from the sun, pulling it around it, right? Then they did the tests to measure the orbit, and they did not get the detection of the orbit expected. They replaced Newtonian gravity with Einsteinian gravity, saying, oh, well, we d with Einstein Einsteinian gravity, we don't expect to see the orbit motion, right? We don't expect to detect it. Because it's actually not going in a curved path. It's going straight. Even though we think it's going in a curved path around the sun, right? From the earth, it's going straight. And in Einstein's framework, an object can uh, move from a straight path without an external force acting on it. So now, gra so they changed it. Again, Newton said absolute and fixed space. Meaning it's absolute. It's fixed, right? He claimed that space was absolute and fixed. Most people thought there had to be an ether because Newton says that gravity is instantaneous. So if it's instantaneous, that means it has to be a, a mutual, mutual contact. It has to be touching both bodies. So he said absolute and fixed. He said that gravity was a force. Most thought there was an ether. And he says in his law of motion that an object will continue in a straight path unless an outside force acts upon it. Einstein came in and said, space is not absolute and fixed. He got rid of the ether. He said, gravity is not a force. It's just the effect of the bending and warping of space time. And he said that an object does not need an outside force to act upon it 
because to remove it from a straight path because it actually is going in a straight path but from another reference frame it's going in a curved path because it's free falling in curved space time in a geodesic path so those are four fundamentally important claims that einstein had to change to explain michelson morley if you were going to try to keep the heliocentric model alive i know that's quite a bit but i think that that was pretty digestible so that's like the foreground here, right? And the reason that's important, or the background, the reason that's important is because what we're talking about right now is Einstein said, oh, well, it's, you didn't detect the orbit because it's a linear velocity, meaning that it's moving in a straight line. That's why the interferometer couldn't detect it. So through Newton out said it's going in a straight line. Now we're talking about how a test was done that shows that interferometry can detect linear velocity. Okay, all that being said, the first part that, because Alan's going real quick, um, and I might be doing the same thing. I'm trying not to, but so Alan explained, I feel like I'm like, <laughs> like we got paid to do this or something. So Alan yeah, explained, Alan explained that in order to try to explain away this experiment where they detected linear velocity with interferometry, cause that's a major problem for them. Right. Um, they first say that space is absolute and fixed. If we just act like space is absolute and fixed then we can begin to try to explain it away. So I just explained that part of it, right? Like they changed that. Newton said space was absolute and fixed, but Newton changed it and said it's not absolute and fixed. There is no absolute. Everything is relative. There is no ether. Gravity is not a force and that objects don't need an external force to act upon them to remove them from a straight path, right? So that means if they're trying to explain it now in 2023 by invoking absolute and fixed space, they're going back to the 1600s, which they cannot do. Okay. All right. Now continue. I can get a mic check, bro. Yeah. What's up, bro? Yeah, we hear you. Okay. I'm just making sure. Yo, I've never seen a. Is that a PlayStation logo? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm playing. I'm talking through my PS5 right now. <laughs> That's pretty cool, dude. I've never seen that. Um. So that was a that was the whole background. Just so maybe it'll kind of make more sense if Alan, if you want to continue. But like, I just know whenever you're like, but they have to invoke the absolute and fixed space. That some people are like, what are you talking about? <laughs> So that, we've kind yeah, of broke so, that whole thing down ad nauseum at this point. Yeah. So the idea of when Einstein, you know, removes the ether, right? Not just mechanistically, like, uh, like where the speed of, like where, where electromagnetic propagation is dependent on that, you know, to carry charge potential, that kind of thing. Not just that concept of it, right? Where you can measure relative velocity, right? But mathematically, right? Where you would have like a preferred frame to measure relative velocity, that kind of stuff. So he removed that concept mathematically and try to say that, you know, every other frame is, is equally as valid. Right. So that's a huge distinction there. And this experiment directly contradicts that right to where, to the point where, you know, in 1913, when Sagnac did this, they had to say, um, as in Einstein's paper, you know, he explains that any closed polygonal circuit uh, that's in uniform rotation, right. So meaning a classic Sagnac device, you know, in rotation, uh, is an inertial frame so it's the so special relativity should be able to derive uh the the fringe displacement right but it can't right with all their math magics they can't explain it it with special relativity the only way they can explain it is with general relativity with a new mathematic system <laughs> like it's, it's insane like and they just teach people that it's not a violation it's not an inertial frame don't look here gps you know is is proof of relativity and it's like the the clocks explicitly account for the velocity of what's carrying them, right? Like the range measurement equation in GPS is measuring the variance in the speed of light to derive the distance accurate down to the millimeter. Like it, it none of it proves relativity. Like they hoodwinked all of us to maintain a belief system about the Earth being in motion. It's it's insane, dude. When you think about it. Like, instead of just being up front, like, hey, GPS works off of the ether and the Earth's stationary. Like, they couldn't, they couldn't even do that, dude. They, they were like, no, no, it doesn't exist. We're still in motion. And here, we, and here we are in 2024, not about to go to the moon this year either, boys. <laughs> like, we're not about to go back to the place that we went to six times in 1960. Hell, you're epic, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, bro. What's about the Wayne Denver? The Wayne experiment? Hey, Who's Bull that? Knight. Bull Knight. 
Yeah, what do you think about this? So I just read the, the Wang paper uh, for the first time. I've seen the pictures of the little pulleys and the little conveyor. Uh, the intro, or the, the, what is that, the abstract at the top? Mm-hmm. It says it's for measuring linear motion, not linear velocity. Mm-hmm. And the conclusion is that you can use this thing as an accelerometer. Okay. Not as a velocity, absolute velocity measuring device, right? Am I missing something there? Well, he also patented mm-hmm. a speedometer based on this. And it's... Mm-hmm. It it detects the ex, the direct proportional velocity of the linear portions of the waveguide loop, and if you're saying it's relative, I mean that's specifically relative to the quote unquote speed of light. So the, 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 the what is the measuring is real, the two pieces friendship? of the device relative to each other, right? What's that? Not Sorry, like it, it's detecting. All right, figure three a, right? That's the one where they're like at the at the end. They say with an end, this this can be used to greatly enhance the accuracy of an accelerometer. Yeah, because the sure. top that top long portion would be mounted in a way that lets it flex. The bottom part is mounted uh, static to whatever the device the accelerometer is in, and then yes, you can you can. If you're tracking ac- uh, acceleration accurately enough, you can conclude what, calculate what speed you're at when you stop accelerating, if you know what speed you start accelerating from, right? So in that sense, it could be an ex- like a speedometer. Yeah, his first pat. So he did this experiment first in 2003, and then uh, in January 2004, he put in the preliminary patent work for a, specifically a speedometer. And then he did, he got uh, fiber optic gyros from the Navy and a bunch more fiber core or air core and glass core fiber to do this experiment in 2004 to further generalize the Sagnac effect, just doing more configurations of linearized portions of the, of the interferometer. There's an experiment on that speedometer device that predates this experiment. That's what you're saying. So this was his second time showing the linear motion being detected. And he, as soon as he saw it the first time, he immediately put in preliminary patent work. The patent didn't actually get filed till 2009, or didn't mm-hmm. get uh, he didn't get the patent until 2009. But he immediately put in the preliminary work. In yeah, 2003. Yeah. <clears throat> so, as far as experiments that sh- that do demonstrate the measurement of absolute velocity independent of acceleration. No one's put forward anything like that yet, right? Bro, wait, wait, wait. If you can detect linear velocity with interferometry, you should be able to detect the Earth's orbit. This, this, the, the, the Wang paper does not claim to be able to do that from what I'm reading. So uh, sp- can, you, can you help us understand how it's linear motion and not linear velocity? Right. If, if, if that's what an, ac- an accelerometer does, if something's, if my phone's on the table, I pick it up, it accelerates, it's detecting the, ob- the object's motion. It's not detecting a velocity it can calculate a velocity, acceleration over time, between start and stop. Okay, so it's detecting the linear motion? Yes. So over shouldn't time. we be able to use linear interferometry to detect the Earth's orbit, which is a linear motion? Yep. In their paradigm, we should be able to. Not if all you're basing the final velocity on is from acceleration, which is what the conclusion of the paper, the very last two paragraphs, discuss the the practical application of this being. Wait, I thought you wait, wait. I thought you just said that it was detecting linear motion. Right. That well, for okay, to de- for an accelerometer to detect the mo- the orbit of the Earth, it would have to be turned on before the Earth started orbiting if that's what from what i understand 
if it's already accelerating, if it's accelerated to the point where now it's orbiting, right? I don't. I mean, no one. I don't think anyone says that's how it, the whole. It's a direct mm-hmm. proportional. You need. You need to look at the math. It's a direct proportional relationship of the speed, the motion of the linear cable of the linear fiber core. So, it's not. It's not just acceleration. Like the 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 fo- the full movement is proportionally measured in the fringe shift. It's like if you look at the, if, like if the he, page right before that, the bottom of page three, the first column, where yeah. there's showing all the equations, he says the general conclusion includes the Sanyak effect of rotation right. as a special case. In fact, the Sanyak result can be derived from the general equation. He's telling you that it's C plus right. V, C minus V. Which means minus velocity plus velocity, directly proportional. Yes, to the thank you. Thank you, Biasticles. Yes. I mean, it makes but sense. In, in 3A, it's, only it, one part of that oh, device is moving. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. If this is able to detect linear motion, right? Linear velocity. Why wouldn't it be able to t- detect the Earth in orbit? I mean, the paradigm would say because it's in free fall. Okay, it's if not it's in free fall. Well, s- well what? Or the acceleration concept, but it's in free fall, right? So it turns out that satellites actually account for the Sagnac effect as well. And they're, even though they're in, you know, what you, you know, they Which tell you guys that they're, that, yeah, they tell right. you that they're in free fall, but they're actually accounting for their absolute velocity relative to the center of the ECI reference frame, which obviously yeah, doesn't make any sense. Earth centered and inertial, right? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, from our point of view, right? They're the ones moving. They're the ones orbiting. We aren't orbiting with no, the no. satellites, right? No, but you're not. I mean, but there's, there's, it's compounded, no, wait, wait. right? Obviously. No, 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 no. You're not. You're not understanding. If Einstein clock synchronization were true, their velocity wouldn't matter. It wouldn't, right? Because the speed of light's the same regardless. Okay, but it's 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 actually retards proportional to their velocity. So they found that they have to actually correct the clocks proportional to whatever their velocity is. Clock corrections twenty two. Yeah, and they and so they they have a couple different ways to dress it up and not and so like people it doesn't look like the Sagnac effect right, but there was a paper put out in nineteen or er, I'm sorry in two thousand by a guy named Paul Marmot, kind of outed the whole gig and uh, broke down the equations, and he references back like all the equations that they use in the modern um, what do you call it like the they like fuck the that guy though right <laughs> they yeah fuck so like. That guy. So he referenced like how they uh, how they sync atomic clocks based on experimental, you know, evidence that the speed of light is proportional to the velocity of the craft. Right. Um, he referenced all the what do you call it? Like the IEEE documents, right? Like the like the engineering standards, right? For how they would, uh, for how they sync them. And and he got a body bag. Dude, they fired him, cut his funding, and uh, he got fired from office after that. Crazy. He was teaching. Yeah, it was like they, his his whole career got ended after that. I'll link the paper. You can check it out. It's it's really fascinating because there's no reason that the clock should be correcting for its absolute velocity relative to a coordinate system, to an arbitrary coordinate system, right? Like so, like obviously, there's more going on there, and they're just but the way that they have to do it mathematically is through that coordinate system. And interestingly enough, the ECI coordinate system is synced to the stars. So what you would, so what the Michelson Gale Pearson measured, right? The the measurement that corresponds to sidereal time, right? All of that stuff, um, is is what there is what the clocks are synced to as well. Right. It's crazy. That is okay. Yeah. I can see how his, their, this, these devices in the Wang experiment could detect absolute velocity if part of the machine was fixed to an absolute spot and then they started measuring the phase change or the phase shift. Well, but in all, the, all of them, there's only there's, I mean, it's just that bottom one, like only the top part of that is moving, and that's the one where they're like, this is what we would use to construct the device that does X. So if the whole, if the whole device is moving already, you couldn't turn it on and detect that movement from what I can see. I just, what am I missing there? 
it wouldn't matter. It's it's going to retard proportionally to that velocity. So it, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter when you turn it on. Why is there only one velocity vector on three A? What? He's talking about figure. Three A. Only one part of that device moves. I can't see the figure. I don't know. He's talking about the parallelogram. Trapezoid, but yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Wayne calls, I mean, it just, oh, it's, yeah. it's, both, it's a trapezoid and a parallelogram. Wayne calls it a parallelogram so, in the paper. Uh, so you're just you're, so you're saying so you're saying like if the device were turned off and then you started moving the device like halfway the distance oh, no, of the right. half it arc, would, it would start as a parallel parallelogram, but the uh, the total range of movement. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was right. You're, it is a parallel room. <laughs> you're, you're good. So as it's completing its range of motion, though, if it was turned on during the course of that, you you don't think it would start. Uh, you don't think it would produce a fringe proportional to the velocity as it starts to. I do it? because I if when in the in the mo instant you described, it's turned on while it's completing a range of motion, and then it would measure from that point to the end and that because the only way there would be a, a velocity on one part of it is if one part or the other moved independently right mm, yeah so it would it would it would start measuring acceleration from wherever if you turn it on while accelerating reach the end of its range of motion and that would be its maximum acceleration reading. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why they get a, a direct that, that proportional. Your, your measurement, your measurement of velocity would be, would be wrong in that case because you missed like well, half of the okay. acceleration. You're measuring so, that. Your specific. Go ahead. Yeah, you would. So, like in that case where you're turning it on with where it's going to have a different range of motion, you would just adjust that in the in the equation because the the length of travel is actually accounted for in there already. That's why. That's why the only thing that could possibly change in that scenario is the speed it's of the light. Speed of right? light. Right. It's there crazy. you go. Because the 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 distance predicted in the lab frame matches the experiment frame. Like it's just so. You know, it's one of those things. I'll be right back. I am curious. I, I I am curious. Um, what, if you've heard any of this, or what your take is on the fact that um, you cannot claim that the Earth is orbiting around the sun. And invoke Newtonian mechanics. Newtonian mechanics cannot be true in your paradigm. Uh, relativity was proposed to explain the Michelson Morley results That's specifically. A fact. That's a fact, yeah. right? There. Like that, it, you cannot ignore that fact. That's what Einstein literally said. Yeah. Like, I have his paper pulled up right now. So, when all the ballers say, Newtonian mechanics is good enough, Einstein didn't change Newtonian mechanics, they're the same thing, it works on the solar system and on the Earth, and it's good enough, and it is it is accurate, it's not wrong, all of this is just patently wrong. Go ahead and say, the Glovers say, doesn't match with, doesn't line up with what I've learned over the years. So I don't know that, you know, obviously Newtonian mechanics works for my car or how fast will a rock be traveling at the bottom of a hill or in one of my old physics books, uh, how fast a penguin will be sliding on the ice if you pull it on a string, right? Like that was mm -hmm. an example they used. So I don't, to say that it's not true. I don't know. I don't know that that's a truth claim. If if F equals MA works at human scale for doing things we want to do, just because well, general special relativity for... may alter the final conclusions or the final all of it, I don't think that that means that it's not useful, right? And that's well, okay. It doesn't, okay work, no. it doesn't work for gravity. Yeah, no one's talking that's about if thing, it's that's useful. Thing, that's a thing on the local scale that we all experience every day. It's the accelerative effect towards the ground. Mm -hmm. 
no no one's uh disputing that it's useful right i can show an electrostatic equivalence i can use colm's law to literally derive little g right um i can use electromagnetic nature of gravity to even derive big g i can use an etheric framework to derive big g actually 4d space geometry came from Henri poincare's etheric interpretation right yes we can use math newtonian math for certain things on the earth and it can be useful just like electrostatics could be useful for the same exact thing but that isn't my point though it's a non sequitur it's actually a diversion from my point that's why i'm pointing this out because that because the ballers say well it works for these things so we can just keep using it but what i'm saying is it has to be wrong if the earth is orbiting around the sun so if a baller's position is oh, well, it, we know it's not wrong, it works, then what they're saying is, we know the Earth's not orbiting around the sun because they literally cannot coexist because Mickelson Morley would have detected the orbit of the Earth if there was an external force acting upon the Earth causing circular motion or rotation. Einstein saved the heliocentric model by saying, oh, there, there isn't an external force Gravity isn't a force. Space isn't absolute and fixed. And actually, the Earth is free falling in a geodesic path of curved space time, not experiencing an external force. It's just traveling in a linear path. That's why the interferometry can't detect it, because interferometry only detects circular motion. So if you don't say that, then Michelson Morley debunks the claim it orbits the Sun. Right? So simply, if Newtonian mechanics were true, then the Michelson Morley experiment would debunk the claim the Earth orbits around the Sun. So if you believe the Earth orbits around the Sun, you quite literally cannot believe in Newtonian mechanics. Belief is a weird word. So, like, I don't believe in, you know, I don't believe in Newtonian mechanics. I don't know what the. the all that is very interesting historically but i don't think it sways me one way or another it's not about no it's it i'm not trying to sway you i'm, I'm saying well, you, that's, if, what, that's if, what a belief if, would be like if you have a belief i don't believe you have, you have a belief then yeah you don't think you have a belief about whether the earth orbits the sun or not yeah that versus geocentrism would huh. not change much about how I think about anything. If that's, okay, but you do currently you know, believe point, that, it, right? You do currently believe it orbits the sun, right? I, other than historical, what you just laid out, then I don't have any. Re it hasn't been, you know, I don't have any reason not to. But it's also not something I wake up thinking about. Uh, oh wow! So some, some, something is assumed to be true until it's disproven. Is that your argument? This is getting to like uh, philosophical levels of it, right? But well, yeah, because it could have talked about how you have a belief. Oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. What I do see are, you know, satellites and, and, and all of this stuff about you know, GPS clocks, right? That seems to indicate something's in space doing something. And that all lines up much more. Uh, that that all suggests that it is Earth is a sphere with the satellites going around it, going around the sun. Ether may or may not play into it, but okay. So you there's, just there's diverted. A lot more tangible. There's a lot more tangible stuff that I put more stock in, yeah. and maybe you yeah. see it as a deflection or diversion. You're very like, yeah. well. You're projecting. Yeah, you're deflecting. Yeah, you you did blatantly divert to the Earth being a sphere. That's not what we're talking about. You <laughs> sli you slipped in at the end okay. something about it going around the sun. Can you explain to me how if satellites really are in space, how that verifies that the Earth moves around the sun? That well, that's what I mean. Like whether it does go around the sun or not does not change the fact that there are satellites I can interact with that trace paths through the sky that match uh, the model you're of you're diverting again. Orbiting around. Well, are you really like, to concede, I don't are really you care really about to, like, to a geocentric Earth. Then 
or yeah, are you, right. like that's that's the end of it then you're conceding well, even even more, you're conceding the that it makes more say about to be a geocentric the best i've ever heard what to say about that is that it's equivalent so if it's equivalent why does it matter mm. belief actually actually what i say is at the least you have to concede a kinematic and dynamic equivalence and validity right so that means things like satellites and all of this according to you guys even if you sent a satellite all the way out through the solar system it wouldn't prove if we're going around the sun or not because according to your model you wouldn't be able to tell and there's a kinematic equivalence with retrograde parallax aberration the orbital motions etc but i also then point out if there is a kinematic and dynamic equivalence in validity but the geocentric model does not have the dark matter or dark energy problems wouldn't that mean that it's significantly more viable than the heliocentric model So I never say they're equal in validity. It's not even close. In your your paradigm, ninety six percent of the, the universe kinematic is, equivalence is what I was referring to. Yeah, yeah, but you see that the evidence strongly suggests that the Earth is one hundred percent not flying through space, as we have intricate, precise measurements with interferometry showing that the Earth is not orbiting the Sun. We actually do detect a fringe shift, though, which directly correlates with the sky moving. We have interferometry that detects that the propagation rate of light is faster east to west, the same direction that the stuff in the sky moves, and that it gets even faster when you get closer and closer to the sky, right? And, about that. And it, but, but the point is, bro, like, the measurements to detect the motion of the Earth were negative. So the motion of the Earth has never been detected, and all observations look like we're in the center, right? The other model claims that it's just an illusion. And then if we are in the center, we don't have the dark energy problem. So doesn't that mean that the geocentric model not only has all the evidence and the empirical measurements, but also is significantly more viable to explain the observations? Like it's not even close. My, my, my thought process there would be if there'd still be there are plenty of unanswered questions about the how and the what of a geocentric system they just don't have names so it almost name, feels like can you name like, one what's making all of it move what if if hmm. if it's geocentric and a sphere right let's make that i will make that assumption for now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we allegedly send satellites to orbit the sun so what's the force pulling them towards the sun to let them mm -hmm. orbit the sun while the sun orbits or rotates around us yeah that's but, a mystery right right so and and so basically you're saying that um since it isn't known in the geocentric model what would be acting as the force of gravity then it isn't like a sufficient postulation but within your paradigm admittedly they don't know what gravity is. In fact, they know right now they claim it's not a force and they claim it's the bending and warping of space time, right? So the answer from your paradigm would be this quote unquote satellite that goes into the second law of thermodynamics violation known as the vacuum of space actually is moving around the sun because it's following the curvature of space time and that gravity, just the effect of the bending and warping of space time. But that doesn't work. Right, because it's off by like say ninety nine percent with uh, galaxy cluster retain or being retained, right, and the galaxy being retained in the cluster and blah blah blah. So neither one of those works. So if we apply the same standard to your paradigm, then we have to throw out the heliocentric model because you guys don't have an explanation either. But actually, the geocentric model does have an explanation, right? For one, like I said, there's a, there's even a dynamic equivalent. So if you used Einsteinian or Newtonian mechanics from a geocentric model, it's equally valid. In fact, it's more valid because Newtonian mechanics, for example, uses actual centrifugal forces in its math. It also uh, doesn't have a time variable, which means instantaneous action at distance. Well, if the Earth is stationary and you have an ether, because the only reason the ether was thrown out is because Mickelson Morley showed that the Earth's not orbiting, so they had to throw the ether out, and they had to say space wasn't absolute and fixed. So now you have an ether. So really, you could also incorporate parts of Einsteinian, which is that there is some background medium that's waving or bending, right? And objects move in relation to that because of pressure mediation. So you could literally just invoke electromagnetic nature to gravity, which is actually just the effect of the vibrational displacement of an ether. 
and you don't need dark energy or dark matter. So now it's way more viable than heliocentrism. And this is one of the main reasons. If you invoke electromagnetic, quote unquote, gravity, then you don't have any of the problems with proportionate mass. Meaning, and I'll stop after this is a lot, but your model claims that if you have a certain amount of mass, you have a certain amount of gravity. And they looked out in the sky and they saw, for example, that the galaxy, the coma cluster, ha only had 1% of the mass needed to have the amount of gravity that supposedly they're holding the galaxies in. So it's missing 99% of mass. And there's really nowhere for them to go because their equations say this much mass, this much gravity, right? So they had to say dark matter or whatever that is. But if it's electromagnetic, you're not strictly limited to the amount of mass because I can have two magnets that are the exact same mass and one can be way stronger than the other. It's actually based on coherency, right? So a geocentric model is superior, far superior in practically every way. All measurements show that the Earth isn't moving through space and all astronomical observations in the history of mankind show that the Earth is in the center. So it would not only be a belief you have, it would be a belief in the face of the evidence, right? So, As soon as all of that is used to produce something useful or tangible or uh, accomplish something in the real world better than, because like, it's a top, like, I'm not doing those, I'm not launching my satellites myself, okay, right? Obviously, none of us are. So we don't need to do, we don't need to like prove it by making s something new and bringing that into reality, like producing some good with it, some, some results in the real world that's plain for all to see. So I don't spend a lot of time worrying about any of that, right? Yeah, but I, I just explained that. Well, you, yes, you, the whole thing started out with because geocentrism doesn't have unanswered questions like dark matter, it has fewer assumptions and more or less, in, in as many words, is more viable. viable. Yeah. yeah. It but, is just a fact. <laughs> when, it not a fact? when described in that way, perhaps, but as you went through all of that, until there's, you know, yeah, that just doesn't hold a lot of weight one way or the other. Like wow. maybe there's a, I will pass a quest, uh, you know, past the test at school, but beyond that, so what? Dude, if you have an ether, you have, it's all of a sudden you have oh, wait. the, uh, what's we, before we get too far afield, you talked about varying speeds of light, right? Yeah. So does that mean from the same source in one direction versus the other, the frequencies would be different? If the, the speed, speed of light of the... has a, a preferred direction. Right. I've heard that. Yes. Sure. So to me, that, that, the, the implication of that seems like it would be a 500 megahertz signal broadcast east versus broadcast west receivers would pick up diff a different frequency on one side versus the other no no it would it would pick it up faster going one direction than the other direction and it's like a fort like they what, what was the paper alan you still in there yeah paul marmont uh 14 marmont, nanoseconds right? going 14 yeah, nanoseconds so, right so yeah they've do they've done that um with GPS already. So in like 1980s, early 1980s, there was a guy named Alan and others. So it was Alan, Weiss, and Ashby. <clears throat> they did this, and they found that there was a variance in the speed of light. They attribute this to Earth rotation, of course. They call this a Sagnac effect, blah, blah, blah. They, so they say, oh, the Sagnac effect is present uh, in GPS, and they equate it uh, in that regard for, uh, for the electromagnetic propagation of this signal, right? So, uh, so there was that, but before that, there was the atomic clock synchronization that they were doing through the 70s, which was 
so what he was just talking about there, referencing the 14 nanoseconds, there was um, there was clocks that they took from Washington to Japan, and to sync them, they sent signals around the Earth in different directions, east and west, and there was a what what totaled out to be a 14 nanosecond delay um, in both directions. So that, that preferred direction that you were talking about. Yeah. Is, uh, you don't think that that would there, result in a Doppler like shift in the frequency received? No, it, it it would, and there's also a variance to it too. That's what that's what produces um, the Doppler shift, right? Like the Doppler shift doesn't just happen for funsies, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but wouldn't that be detectable from a, a stationary transmitting tower on Earth with stations on Abs- each side? Absolutely. So yeah, people that, make yeah. so people make one way GPS or one way uh, speed of light measurements um, using GPS. They use that argumentation because. The way it actually works, it's you know using the range measurement equation based off of the ratio of c and the and the time it takes um, you know between propagation. They uh, that's how they derive distance for uh, uh, you know in, in GPS, right? So that's a one way one way uh, measurement there. So like the time that the signal was sent and the location of the satellite, and then the uh, time it takes for it to be received, and then like the location of where it was received at, right? And they ratio that time against c, and then when they take that measurement. That um, you know, and this is according to the special relativity mathematic framework, where you get into covariance and all that, right? So, because of covariance, I don't know if you know what that is, but just uh, bear with me. Uh, because of their, because of the belief system of how their math works, they, the distance that's derived from that first measurement should be invariant under transformation. So, when they take it from the ECI coordinate system and put it on the ECEF, it should be the same distance, because, uh, but it's not. So, like they have uh, an additional problem there. And they swoop up this whole thing under the Sagnet correction where they say there's a plus or minus 3% deviation on the speed of light. Uh, and they just they just wrap up all these corrections in it. So where people are getting uh, measurements with GPS where it's proportional to their velocity and all that, where it accurately derives their distance down to the nanosecond, I mean millimeter. Um, and that's all through the variance in the speed of light, like on a one-way measurement technically. So people argue that it varies proportional to the velocity of the observer. That's what I argue. 14 yeah. nanosecond offset. That's like roughly 14 feet, 14 foot different in the wavelength of the received signal on, on either side. And that's 70 megahertz. And that's a huge Doppler shift, right? If my math's right. Yeah, I don't know if your math's right or not, but uh, yeah. It happens like that's it's but, a measurable, but if it's that a if that would fact. still occur with a stationary transmitting tower in say i don't know anywhere and in this case it wouldn't much well okay i guess it would be 14 14 nanoseconds difference over a circumference of the earth a lower orbit radius is that what you're saying yep <clears throat> okay so converting even converting that down to a tower with receivers 50 miles in each direction. There'd be a huge Doppler shift for that you could confirm with almost no work at all. Yeah, what was so the other part of it, Alan, about Earth's meridians, too? Oh, the meridian corrections, dude. Dude. Yeah, so the atomic clocks, uh, they also, <clears throat> in addition to their velocity correction that they put in, there's there's basically like a time interval that goes off based off of how fast they're traveling, and then that time, um, however long it would take for it, for it to cross a meridian, they basically delete distance off of that on the on the back end of their corrections, and they and they also do that for the signal propagation, right? So interestingly enough, um, you know you see satellites in the sky and they go by in the sky and all that, and you're like, oh wow, must be falling around the Earth in free fall and all that, but what you don't realize. You know, that thing you see in the sky, right? That's just, you know, you can't tell how far away that is, right? But you're getting signals from it. So you're like, okay, well, these signals are reifying the position of the satellite. And they're telling me that it's this far away, X, Y, Z, right? But if that's built off of a scale invariant system, right, off of how fast you would see based off of its actual size and distance, right? And then they just, all that would be cooked into the back end of their coordinates. And when you get the signal, it's just, it just outputs that for you. Because what, what they found in 1995, some some guys were trying to uh, to analyze. They were trying to do like a one way uh, 
speed test, right, to see if the speed of light was the same in all directions uh, in the same way that people are doing now. And when they analyzed the raw data, the so-called raw data at the Colorado uh, GPS D Data Collection Institute or whatever the fuck it's called, right, wherever they store all their data, um, <laughs> it's already pre-corrected for the Sagnac effect in it. So it's already pre-corrected to have the assumed value for C in it for at the highest level that they could publicly look at. So like my bet would be on the back end, there's a coordinate system that's like, you know, has all the accurate stuff on it and they just, it literally just corrects off of it because they know exactly, you know, how, how much time it would take for uh, electromagnetic propagation to occur between X, Y, Z distance. So they know how far they need to have it to spoof it. It would just work proportionally and it would output that exactly once they have the system in place. And they spent years figuring this out because I've been going deep on these GPS papers, bro. I got like 40 yeah, papers here, 47 papers here where it's just like all these people are like, where's the relativity corrections? What are we doing? What the hell is going on? Why is this only why are we only doing classical mechanics uh, corrections and, and all this stuff? And then they start working in, you know, the so-called relativity corrections and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, like they, they literally built it into the back end of it uh, to like reify <laughs> how it, how GPS actually falsifies it, dude. It's insane. I've heard you say, you know, say that it's done in the back end. Is that on board the satellite before the satellite transmits its beacon signals? Or is that on the device receiving the GPS signal? Hmm. Hard to say. I, I would say I, I would say that it, that definitely the GPS, uh, whatever's up there, right? Whatever craft is is carrying the system, if that's putting out stuff, then that absolutely would have stuff baked into it to uh, to give coordinate systems. Uh, would it need to bake in different signals for two different stations on Earth, trying to calculate where they are? And the satellite's naive to that fact, like. No. The calculation of where you actually are on the Earth is done on the device based on the satellites that it hears at any given moment and the data in those signals, right? So it's constantly referencing ground stations and stuff to get updates and stuff on where it's at. So it's already going to be like when it sends that signal out to you and stuff, it's already going to be with their coordinate system on it. So it, it's going to always output the globe before you even get a whiff of it. It's built-in corrections, basically. How many of them are there? There's a fuck ton, right? 96, or is it more than that? Was it 96? Yeah, there's a lot. Was it 96 corrections, Alan? I can't remember. No, I'm only I remember aware 24. Of like... No, you're talking about equation references in the paper, bro. Like, not the... It's like equation 24, equation 23. Yeah, not... yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they say that there's... Three different types of corrections they make. Three they say, of them. Okay. So they say one is a general relativity correction. So they say that for the gravitational potential of the satellite, you know, they say that they're all at the same altitude or whatever. And they say that due to Earth's um, oblateness or what have you, that at that altitude, the gravitational potential is equal. So they don't need to make any further adjustments. So they have like a fixed um, adjustment for that for general relativity. So they, can, so they say, okay, relativity confirmed on that end, right? And keep in mind, these are these corrections are for electromagnetic retardation, right? This doesn't it's like like saying that it's due to gravitational effects. It could just as equally be due to the static electric gradient and the retardation, you know, within that at altitude, because there's going to be more pressure, right? So, say same exact kind of situation, right? It's just, <coughs> just accounting for the retardation within the wavelengths. So, they got that to account for. And then they got uh, special relativity, right? So they say that there's a Earth rotation accounting, right? So this would be the ether like wind or what, or what you would call... Then. Yes, because so they say Earth rotation, right? But it's synced to sidereal time because the ECI reference frame is actually synced to sidereal time. So when they say, quote-unquote, Earth rotation with that, with that correction that they have for it in special relativity, it's a velocity correction. They say that that's Earth rotation, but again, it's uh, synced to sidereal time, so GG. Now, in addition to that, there's another one that they, uh, that they have, and this is for, uh, they call this the Sagnet correction. Now, interesting thing about this correction, right? So if you're familiar with Lorentz transformation, the, uh, Lorentz Lorentz. Transform, <laughs> there's, there's the Lorentz boost, right? So the, the Lorentz boost will give you length contraction time dilation, and there's what's called the Lorentz rotation. So if you're, you know, the, the fourth dimensional coordinate system, right, where you have 
time as your uh, y axis essentially, right? There will, you have your t your time axis is perpendicular to your x axis, which is your direction of motion, right? So what you can do with a Lorentz rotation is you can swap the space and time directions. Like I'm not particularly sure the uh, significant like. I don't know, I'm not sure how to describe this really, but what, what they're saying is they're just rotating the coordinate system. So this, this type of correction is not, is explicitly not a velocity correction. This is something that they're, this is a coordinate system rotation uh, that, that they do for that. Why? So they make all, so that, who, I have no idea. I asked, I asked our GPS guy about it because he's the one that explained the, the difference to me and he doesn't even know, bro. It's so weird. But, but, it, they... but if they if they don't, oh, it's for the ether wind. If they don't correct to correct for it, they'll be off by thirty meters to the west. Right, thirty. Or I mean uh, east. Sorry. That's right. I remember reading that. Yeah. So yeah, if they don't, so, yeah, yeah make they those dress it up. Yeah, they dress it up as they're a off secondary. thirty meters in their court coordinate reference. Is he? Yeah. Is right? he? Is he implying that there's not a lot of evidence for evolution? Who? What? This quote. <laughs> Where am I? Oh. A human text chat? Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, uh, what's it's on death and my bad. Yeah. So that's wild. What do you think about that, Bull Knight? If they don't make those corrections, they're off by 30 meters. Right? 30 meters? Yep. Would that be and this, and, on and, and again, that was almost close to your math, by no. the way. You said seventy. What'd you say? It would be dependent on their motion. Oh, seventy motion of the crafts. But in the yeah, one, I, they did just one particular task. Someone did, did didn't include the Sanyak corrections, and it was off by like thirty four, thirty nine meters, something like that. Yeah, and I read in another paper the same amount to uh, 30 meters for not accounting for it. And also like, that's again, that's what our GPS guy said. And again, he's like, this isn't the same type of, um, of, uh, tr of correction because the, the way that they're talking about it, like a sag neck effect, they're talking about it. Like it's a velocity correction. Right. But he's like, but he's like, no, this is explicitly a different thing. So I talked to chat GBT about it. Cause like, you know, I've never even heard of a, like, like I was only familiar with one type of Lorentz transformation. So this is some coordinate system rotation that they do. No reason why yet. It's wild. So it's like, is their coordinate system like off centered and they were doing it like a, a literal rotation of it. Like, I don't really know how to enter. Like that's, that's the only way I can interpret it. Cause if they don't include it, they're off by 30 meters to the East. So, so the, most of them are north south allegedly north south polar orbits right but then the earth would be allegedly rotating underneath it so those axes are already so so actually uh, electromagnetic propagation isn't affected by north south uh, right i remember signals. reading that too so For yeah some when, reason, they, when it goes longitudinal yeah. yeah when it's when it's perpendicular to the ether wind it doesn't there's it's not affected by it it's it's only an east west effect it's literally, it's dude. It's literally so bad. It's like all the things that explicitly falsify relativity, where they're like, there can't be a preferred direction or anything like that. And it's like, there's explicitly a preferred direction. Like it, it's, <laughs> it's wild. Would that be true for ground-based trans, like EM as well? No, dude. The speed delay should be the same, like for for all of it. Well, it should no, be. I mean, oh, wait, no, 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 no. He's You're saying it's not. Is, I'm yes. saying no, 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 that. it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, it literally is. Like, even, like, yeah. literally, uh, fiber optics under the ocean go faster east to west than west Correct. to east. Yep. Yeah. There, dude, there was a guy, like, not the, if you're interested or whatever, there was a guy in, let's see here, what year was this? Because th this wasn't even, like, a scientist, from my understanding. This was just, like, an engineer that was laying cables in, uh, in somewhere in, uh, in somewhere in the Netherlands. And basically, he was running these four mile cables east west. And what he found is that electromagnetic propagation is, you know, there's a variance there that's, uh, that, uh, that fluctuates. It's just like a way. giant ring laser gyroscope, then, in that case. Like, they're, it's not doing it for interferometry on the end. No, but... this is just, this was coaxial cables. 
Yeah, just cables. Like literally, just it just it literally affects east to west, preferred direction. I mean, supposedly, right? Um, so, but okay. So, travel so here's here's, flight, the, right? here's oh, the implication. Here's the implication. Okay, okay go, go ahead. ahead. Well, all right, go ahead. No, you can go. Go ahead. I'm going. I can't. You know, take backs. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so I can look up a a, a known uh, beacon tower broadcasting on a frequency, mm -hmm. and it sounds like I should have to tune up or down based on out of sync of its published frequency, depending on if I'm east, west, or north, south of it. Like north, south would match based on what you just said. But if I was east or west, I, there, I would need three different specific frequencies to tune into that beacon. Well, <clears throat> just think about it like this, bro. It's 14 nanoseconds. Like I said, that's light travels 14 feet in 14 nanoseconds, roughly. But I'm just saying, like, it would be hard to... No, I'm saying it's not. And I don't think my math is wrong in that regard. Well, do you know I would have to adjust it down to the radius of Isn't the, sea level the, versus the radius of low Earth orbit. The 14 me, nanoseconds is that figure specifically is in relation to the distance traveled from New York to San Francisco, just to clear this up. Right. It's either you gain 14 men nanosecond or 14 milliseconds on the way from San Francisco to, right. uh, to New York, and then it's the reverse. You lose 14 nanoseconds on the way from New York to San Francisco. Uh, uh, I, I, both that 14 pain. nanoseconds came from the, the, the GPS test of doing a circuit around the network uh, one way versus the other. But wait, Toby, isn't ping mm -hmm. milliseconds? Ping is milliseconds, yeah. Ping is milliseconds, so yeah. I mean, to notice a fourteen millisecond ping difference is pretty. Like you can notice it, but like that's milliseconds. Nanoseconds is a different ball game. That's why, like, billionth of a second. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like how accurate are you measuring the the speed of the like how accurate is the do you need that propagation to be like that? Oh, if speed, if speed. If speed and frequency yeah, are linked in the way that Doppler suggests, then that is not a, that's an easily detectable off shift. I mean, east to west, right? Would, would you say New York to San Francisco, a fourteen nanosecond delay? Okay, yeah. Clock I think he's talking about something away else. Away from clock Alpha in New York towards clock in San Francisco. Yeah, well, that's that's right. different. This display accumulates about. an extra fourteen nanoseconds. So yeah, that's from New York to San Francisco, and then it does yeah, the same thing. It does the opposite about. in the reverse direction, and going north to south, it doesn't. It doesn't change at all. I mean, you can do well, as Alan test. described it. I don't you can do a test full night. Look, I mean, you can do a test. I can drop right. you the Paul Marmot paper if you want. Like, but you could do your own test, dude. You can have one transmitter, the same frequency, same type of antenna, right? One one receiver and one end, and the same transmitter on the other end, right? You send one signal back and forth, and you and you measure the difference in speed. Yeah, that happens. Well, not the difference in speed, the difference in frequency. Yeah. Or, uh, I guess, I don't know. If, I don't know if if different Honestly. if changes in in the speed of light affect the frequency of that. No, you should you should be receiving the signal, fourteen right. nanoseconds faster going east to west. Then well, yeah, if you're receiving, receiving it faster, that means it's traveling faster, correct? Um, yes. Yeah. It means the cycles per second of that wave will be higher or lower. Uh, it's too late to do that. Yeah. Sign no, you're back. making an interesting point about, yeah. the, Doppler free, about the Doppler shift. So the, that's actually how and, they And I bring it up it. because... Because amateur radio satellites, you have to account for the Doppler shift to be able to use them. And it's uh, it's so it, you can hear that you can hear it even though it's straight uh, megahertz converted. You know, it's just the, the modulation is still after it gets demodulated into 
uh, sound, you can hear the shift as it, and what you're hearing is the shift in the frequency of the the EM signal, not like a sound. It it comes out as sound because they're linked, but right, right. You have to account for that to the point where you you can have a computer control your radio to based on your location and the satellite you the the predicted path of the satellite, or you can yeah. try and do it with the dial. But yeah, it's it's to the point where like. Three, three seconds after you get the directional antenna on that satellite, if you don't account for it, you're no longer receiving it because the Doppler has shifted it out of your bandwidth. Right, and th- that's actually what they how they describe it in the uh, in the ICD documents, where they say they because because the, obviously in the GPS manuals they're not going to say, "Hey, boys, the speed of light's actually changing." You're like you know. <laughs> But they they do reference it as a Doppler frequency shift that's proportional to the velocity of the observer, right? So, yeah, it's definitely present if, there. If that's and if I, that is due to it, the medium I, it's traveling through and not the relative motions of the objects, then it should be true for terrestrial transmission and reception, and that should yeah, be trivial yeah, to just tune into, literally. Yeah. Something very interesting. Anyway, relativity's dead. How's your day? And things like those amateur radio satellites are what I mean by using the hey, model uh, paradigm versus the other to do cool. something I can interact with and and participate in on a daily basis. Like, well, wait, our whole point here is that it literally shows something that doesn't work in your paradigm, and it actually only works in our paradigm. That's like the whole not point. In these GP, not the on whole these point. amateur radio satellites. You, GPS has been the GPS satellite network and and data and transformations has been pointed to as evidence of that. But I'm just talking about radio repeater satellites. Wait, what about where the Doppler? Sh- where the calculation of the Doppler shift is is determined solely by the elevation and speed of the satellite versus a stationary person on earth trying to find it with a directional antenna. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Wait, but so how somehow that ex- is proof of a globe? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying everything. There, these are very simple, literal rep- repeater set, like repeater stations, but orbiting the Earth, right? Allegedly, they do have. You can decode their their uh, shit. What's it called? The telemetry data from them, if you want to, but you don't need to to use them. And you, you know, if you want to calculate, oh, I want to try and make a long distance contact using a repeater satellite. All of the calculations required to do that are not complex. I mean, they're not a a single calculator and no notes, but it's globe based. As far as your location of transferring or transmitting your signal to that satellite to then be repeated? Yeah, yeah. And the, the satellite the repeats it omnidirectionally. What's the wave divergence mm-hmm. on your device? The the transmitter or the yeah. transceiver that um, I would be using? Yeah, your emission that you're putting out, what's the wave divergence? What do you mean by wave divergence? How what how what's your degree of accuracy, right? You're trying to aim for this for this satellite, how far does your beam diverge? Uh, 40, typically 40 degrees if you're using a 
highly directional antenna. 40 so degrees? Cone, like you're, you're holding, it's, they look like, you know, swords with nails on them, right? Sticks with, you know, they're like three feet long. And wherever you point that, at, from one of the elements on that directional antenna is a cone away from you, hopefully. Yeah, so then you're sending About a 40 signal. Degrees wide. You're sending a signal with that divergence in that general direction at that device, and then it's tuning into a specific frequency. It does not you, tune. It's well, it's, it's the literally satellite does not. The satellite is static, tuned tuned statically. Okay, but it's transmitting a signal of the frequent of the signal that you put out in a specific frequency, whatever. However, it's been shifted at its reception point. Doesn't it's not going to change the you know the signal you put out what do you mean like i guess i'm just like we're talking about radio frequencies right we're talking about rating we're talking specifically about radio right audio signals right. being sent through radio waves right okay and so then whoever's tuning whoever's going to be listening into that is going to be tuning into a specific frequency so that whatever whatever frequency shift you're going to use to try and explain this, I mean, it's irrelevant to the end listener because they're just they're t they're tuning into that frequency. Is this regardless? No, they the they have to shift to listen or at least to hear accurate, and then even if they wait too long, then they won't receive it at all if they don't keep in time with the uh, <laughs> the Doppler offset on their end. No, because they're they're like. Their device, when they listen to it, it tunes into the frequency for them. No, it's picking it up specifically no, no. that frequency. No, That's what you have to manual. You have to manually track it up or down from the published transmit frequency of the satellite. Yeah, it's, it's right above you. If it's right at like ninety degrees altitude, who's doing then, that? What? Who's doing what? Who you said it's right above you, and you have to who who you're, so you're still going no, back saying, to transmitting if the receiving the station if the receiving station and, and it waits until the satellite is directly overhead, only so then will really the received signal be the same frequency as the published specs of the satellite itself. But ah. if it's moving towards you, the frequency will be higher, and if it's moving away from you, the frequency will be lower by enough that if you don't compensate, you don't receive the, the signal. Huh. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> oh, I'd definitely look more into that. Bull Knight, you might be actually kind of useful. Oh, yeah. I would like to see Try a map of that. Now, some people build like articulated gimbals for their Directional satellite I mean, antennas. Does it not sound like you're kinda... describing what what we're describing? No, I'm saying if I'm saying that's that's true for satellites in space. But what you're describing, and well, specifically what Alan was describing with preferred direction of light, east to west, that should also be true for three for a transmitting tower and two station two stationary receivers yep. on Earth. Yeah, so there but... should be do there should be frequency offsets equivalent to Doppler shifts, depending on whether you're to the east or the west of a uh, well. I mean, what what a transmitting tower do you think the satellites are using? What do you, what does that what does that mean? What would that what would I do with that? It, I'm telling you that they would be doing the exact they'd be counting for the exact same they'd be doing the exact same equations that we're telling you they're using for GPS. It would no, be the exact no, same. There's no, there's... There's no nothing like that's happening on the satellite. When if you send was, your then signal, it would be dynamic, send, right? Hold on. When you send your signal to a satellite, it then translates that signal to where another satellite or a station that receives it, and during that point, that's using that's going to use the global coordinate system. And once no, it goes, no, it doesn't directionally do system, anything. What's that? It doesn't do anything directional with the the transmission. And in order for it to be real time, so it's not like you upload a, a message and then it rebroadcasts it, right? This is a real time repeater. One, the receiver is on VHF and the, the transmitter is on UHF, two different frequencies, so that it can simultaneously, instantaneously 
receive a, receive a signal and rebroadcast at a different frequency, but those are, those are static fixed frequencies published, otherwise you couldn't use the thing. So, it's re so now you're saying that it's rebroadcasting. That's what a repeater is. I should have clarified, but yeah, that's what repeaters do. And so then it's being, and then someone has to point something. Okay, so you're not going from satellite to satellite at any point. No, not in this case. It's one satellite that's. You've done it. You've specifically done parties. it to the satellite device, and then you've specifically received it from that exact same satellite device. You actually do listen to your own retransmission to make sure you're in this that it's actually you've dialed it incorrectly. But yes, it's the idea is to have somebody else further away here and then respond from the same satellite. Yeah. Huh? So how? Go ahead, BS. You have something? You have yeah. a point, BS? Please. Well, well, yeah. What satellite are you using? How fast is this traveling? How how often do you have to change your directional antenna to pick it up? Gotta move it constantly. You can't. That people can handhold them if you get practiced <coughs> at it. So then, as far as like tracking through the sky, you know, and you can you can hear in real time because they have it. They're always also always transmitting a beacon signal, which is just a like a serial number, literally. So you can hear like, oh, I'm lined up, I'm just, and then you just kind of like you would track a car with a flashlight, right? And then you've got the a, well, you've got a 40, 40 degree divergence too. So, I mean, you got a true, but that it is, it is, it's not like a equal uh, transmission strength across that whole cone. So it is much stronger in the center and then it'll fade if you're off center from it. So you can hear like, yes, I'm dead center or I can, I'm almost gotcha. there and tweak from there. Gotcha. Just like a directional shotgun microphone. So so if that's the case, right? Do, is there times when you can't pinpoint that satellite you were just locking into? I mean, if you're not, if you're tracking it manually, yeah. But but, but what I'm saying is, when there be a certain point in time where you cannot track it anymore, right? You only it's have below a, the horizon. Okay, so there is a point in time where you can't track it anymore. Yeah, I mean that's how they say satellites work, right? Because if that's what you're, if you're asking, is like, is there a point where you can't track it, like, but it's right above you? Only, no. only if you've literally no, no, lost no, no. it and can't find it. I'm just saying, if it's someone, not geos, it's not geostationary. Like, can I what, ask? Well, let me like, ask. What are you? What? It, what are you tuning into? What is the satellite broadcast? It's a radio station. Like, what is this? No, it's it's just, and these are uh, most of them are. Sponsored and funded by independent groups who just want their like not their own, but they want to launch another amateur radio yeah, satellite. What are you listening to? What are you tuning in? No, it's literally like I have. I want to use my walkie-talkie to talk to from Maine to California. Yes, yeah, during the window a when it's when the overhead. person tunes in. On the other end, when the person tunes yeah, in, yeah, yeah. hear the signal, how does that decoding process work? It's just AM or FM. Okay, Some so they're tuning FM. into a specific frequency of a rebroadcasted yes. radio wave signal. How does that have anything to do with the velocity of the propagation rate of light? Because there, there's a published transmit frequency for the satellite, and that's like the middle range, and you will only receive that on that frequency from that satellite if it's directly overhead and that's only for a moment otherwise it's moving towards or away from you and you have to you would then have to shift and account for the doppler shift of the transmitted signal are you trying to act like you're you thinking section. that the speed of light is slower than the speed of the satellite or something like i don't get it you have a 40 <laughs> degree divergence no, I don't no, know. no 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 i think there's not like there's an exact i'm not saying that something. at all and then you're tuning into a very specific frequency, so no matter what, whatever, how late or early it's received, you're just going to pick up the same frequency, and those couple no. of nanoseconds difference, no one's ever going to no. notice on the receiver end. Okay. Uh, main, uh, consensus would be that if a satellite is moving while broadcasting, the speed of light remains the same, but because the satellite is moving, the received frequency is Doppler shifted. 
Okay. On the other hand, a lot like, of what, what does that have to do I, with the person that's tuning in with us? Spe- they're tuning into a specific frequency on the receiving end. So what does that have to do right, with but, but the signal? The, the signal that they're wanting to listen to will not be on that frequency because of the Doppler shift. No, it's just gonna, it's, it will be on that frequency, but just like five nanoseconds later. No, that's that is enough to not tune into to not receive the signal. You have to hear something your, five nanoseconds you later. Up. You wouldn't listen to it. You're never going to notice. No, you're confused. Your, game is your, five your, nanoseconds behind what's happening in real time. Yeah, that's you're right. tuning into the frequency. You're crossing no, terms. No, that that's what I was think. That's what I was saying by bringing up the ping analogy. How ping is only like milliseconds, and you can barely notice that. Let alone fucking nanoseconds, like in real time. That is a digital packet, which, regardless of how long it takes to get to you, will be decoded exactly as it was sent, unless it got a dropped packet or corrupted. But I I know a radio transmission. I mean, I don't want to go to like radio one hundred and one, but it's a a modulated signal, right? But there's a baseline, the carrier, the carrier signal, the carrier frequency, and then a, a patch of a, a bandwidth above or below that, above and or below that, depending on the, the modulation used. Where if that, that the, whole, the whole signal will be Doppler shifted up or down, depending on whether the satellite is heading towards or away from you. So if you have a receiver set up on the carrier frequency as it'll be it'll be in the wrong patch of the 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 transmission to receive it accurately or at all except for a brief moment if it happens to go right over your head. I mean you can hear it like you can you can find YouTube videos of people using and hear the Doppler shift because the way the the, a, the modulation works is if that if the hertz are offset up or down, the demodulated audio free audio signal will be modulated up or down incorrectly or inaccurately. Hey, when, where is where is this demonstrable at? Where have you seen this at? I've done it myself. I don't have video of it, but there's lots of videos. These are published. There are dozens of amateur radio satellites. The radio signal. Yes. Oh, ah, what, what causes that? The movement, uh, allegedly the movement of the satellite. And the only reason, so to bring it oh. back, I think you got in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, you came in and like at the end of what we were talking about. The GPS preferred direction of light that Alan's talked about many times, east versus west. If that's due to just the speed of light changing, whether it's transmitted east or transmitted west, then it seems to follow to me that that would mean the received frequencies would be offset depending on whether you're east or west of the transmission. And, I, and then that's the only reason why I brought up the amateur satellites, because like those do demonstrate Doppler shift. Yeah, but you're not like, okay, so if you're picking up a, a direct... You'd be pick if you were picking up a direct signal from San Francisco to New York, which is already hilarious, right? Because how does that even work on a curving globe? But let's say you were doing that, you'd well, still only satellite. have a frequent. You'd still <laughs> let me. Hey, don't please don't interrupt. You'd still only have a frequency shift proportional to a fourteen nanosecond difference. Right, and so the 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 way you get. That would be going from San Francisco to uh, New York. All right, go ahead. You're still crossing terms here. No one's talking about the distance the light has to travel. It's about the speed. Of what is speed a measure the of? Electromagnetic wave. Distance over time. Right. And the distance that we care about is the distance peak to peak of the wavelength of light of that frequency. Because no, when different... we're talking about when we're talking about a proportional frequency shift that's relative to to velocities, then we're talking specifically about the distance that's gonna about the distance that's relative to actually cause your frequency shift. That's what we're talking about. 
I understand how frequency shift works, but I'm telling you, if you're actually going to try and detect a difference, then it's going to have to be a lot more than just a five nanosecond delay. No, five, five nanosecond offset in the speed of light would be roughly equivalent to 70 megahertz. So something's already not working because clearly the Doppler shift is not 70 megahertz. But then you just said it was proportional to the... You, you said there was a proportionality to the speed of the satellite. You said that yourself. I know. And <laughs> so so the, the, the way that I would calculate the Doppler offset, off shift is related to the speed of the satellite versus... Wait, and then you're only sending your speed. signal when it's directly above you anyway. No, so no, 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 no. You no, said you're that yourself. No, I'm, no, I'm saying, I'm saying there's no Doppler shift. There's so this no. Is, this is irrelevant to what Alan said. <laughs> you're, you're, you're way off the map, and maybe that's my fault, but... No, I'm not way off the map. How about instead of trying to, instead of trying to gaslight me, you just have some substance in your speech? <laughs> if you'd heard all of it... I think that's funny, huh? Why don't substance, you say something yeah. substantial? Are you just bored now, Toby? You can move on, like... Yeah, I, I do get bored with sophistry, yes. Now I'm the sophist, okay. So you said that you send your signal to the satellite when it's directly above you, right? Well, that's how, that's no, how I did not say that. I say you have far, to track what, it with a directional this, antenna. It's a whole entire you, arc across the sky. What's the farthest signal you've sent to the satellite? It'd be whatever the elevation relative elevation plus you know right as it crests the horizon so maybe your far, distance I'll, to the horizon you, know, you didn't the, do the math to figure out how far it was no because the distance doesn't actually matter i'm saying it's relative speed but if it's ether wind then that's not what it is hold on we're not getting to the ether wind necessarily yet. i'm trying to figure out that's the only reason i'm talking about any of this because i'm saying that should be reproducible by ter terrestrial signals that's all so you're sending a broadcast to the satellite, and then it's rebroadcasting it, and you're calculating a proportional frequency shift of both directions? Mm -hmm. Well, no, you only care about you're getting your signal into the right frequency range when you send it to the satellite, and anyone who wants to listen to it, depending on where they are relative to the satellite, will have to tune up or down. You only care about getting your own frequency right. What does that mean? What what frequency are you using? Be like one forty four dot six eight. Okay, Make why hertz. the dot six eight? Because kilohertz are a thing. But is there is a, why why is this an arbitrary frequency that you're choosing for you and your your receiver just for for convenience of you guys, or is this somehow related to your calculation? It's not related to the calculation because the satellite okay, so is only the satellite is only using. set up to receive one specific frequency. Okay, and then when when your receiver tunes in, are they tuning into that same frequency? You use that as a starting point, and then you can look up on a table or a program how much of an offset it based on where you are versus the satellite and the relative uh, speed of the satellite. Oh, so they look at a table and then what they move the dial around until they find your signal. Yes. Huh, okay. Thanks. And if they leave it there, it will drift off. You have to continuously adjust the, the dial, the tuner. All right, I've heard enough. All right. People always complain about not being able to do anything themselves, but this is something like trivially, fairly trivially. Compared to a lot of they other look at a things table, then they have, and then they still have to make adjustments. So how does that? You're talking about the dis, <laughs> the degree of precision of of the Sanyak effect on, on a global scale around the Earth, and you're yeah. not even telling me the distances that the light that the signals are traveling. And then you're going to try and claim that that direct proportionality that you've somehow within your margin of error you've perfectly deduced that that can't possibly be happening but you can't even tell me your distances that are being traveled i every all of all of the thing all of the things i've brought up are just talking about what takes place in the real world no and you're not talking about anything about the has, real world you haven't has. even told us how far your radio your your radio wave signals are propagating 
that doesn't matter. Why would that matter? Does. Because it, why would that because, matter? Okay, so then you don't understand what Alan presented because what happens is that mo- the motion is relative to the that decay rate or or acceleration rate, the C plus V or C minus V is relative to motion, the motion through the ether wind. So if you you have to be going, like we said earlier, going from New York to San Francisco or from San Francisco to New York. If you go, if you were to go from San Francisco up to the North Pole and then come back down to New York from the North Pole, guess what? You would have zero. It'd be zero nanoseconds decay or acceleration. So that's why I'm saying this distance is important because we need to know exactly how far your radio waves went uh, east to west or west to east. And then we need to know exactly how far they went west to east or east to west on the way back. Because guess what? They might even just be correcting for it on its own anyways, because maybe you and your buddy are right next to each other and you're shooting something that you're shooting to the, something to the west. And by the time your signal goes to the west and it gains 0.5 nanoseconds and then it goes back the other way to your buddy and it loses 0.5 nanoseconds. Like, what do you know? It equaled out. And but you just you, know, you, you just assume out. that somehow you have this perfect this perfect level of like you know your margin of error on the Sanyak effect around the earth and you but you told me you have to chain move the dial around you look at a table and then you move the dial around you done you don't think they can tell how far they are away Kobe he wouldn't answer me he wouldn't give me a distance easily figure that out because have a final observer that finds the GP for that satellite and then figure out how far that guy is away from you. And you know exactly how far it is away from you. Well, that's what I asked him, and he didn't tell me. Beat well, frequency. Like kind of implied. But he said it didn't matter. It doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter either. Oh, frequency. but it doesn't matter. matter. That's the whole point, is that the, there's a proportional relationship of the distance traveled east to west or west to east relation, relative to the ether wind. That's the whole point. There's not, though. Okay, well, you weren't even here when we looked at the paper that that was specifically talking about this, so don't just come in here and try and refute a paper that you haven't looked at, maybe. This is Paul Marmat, GPS and the Constant Speed of Light. That's what we were talking about. That's why we started talking about satellites, and that's why he brought up his radio wave signals. Because we're talking about... He he was saying that there's no Sanyak corrections made in his in his tuning in to a specific frequency that is going anything from... about the Sanyak. What's Can that? I, how, about I, how about I say what I was saying? Well, sure. I mean, I was just responding to Zanuck because Zanuck was trying to help you out. <laughs> well, that's a turn of events. Not that there's... Couldn't be more than one Zanuck in this world. Um, all of that... All Okay. All I want to do, and that's, I, I took advantage of Alan being online tonight, right, to ask him a question that I'd had in my head about the preferred direction of light, which I interpreted as it goes faster one direction than the other. East to west, 14 yeah. nanoseconds from San Francisco to New York. Right. You could translate into that, uh, you could translate for that miles and that time into a speed difference, right? 14 the speed second. difference. The speed difference is independent of the distance traveled, and the speed difference is what shifts the frequency up or down, not the distance of the signal. He's not no. making sense, dude. I don't understand what you're saying right now. Well, it's directly proportional. <laughs> that's why. It, that's why Toby was asking you for the distances and stuff, because otherwise you would never know. But it's a speed difference. Right, that's what speed is different. Now, maybe, over time, I, maybe, I, maybe I asked all the wrong clarified questions or misinterpreted your answers. But a preferred direction of light means it goes faster one way than the other, right? Yes, and nanoseconds isn't a speed, that's how much faster the signal got there. But you can, you can know how far it traveled. If it's the same one way than, and the other, then you know the different in velocity. Like he said, C1 minus C2. That's a speed, right? So the speed difference is what determines the frequency offset, not the distance traveled.
how Adopt do you get the speed like difference? A, hey, just to make sure that you understand properly, how how are you getting the speed difference? When does that occur? When? Oh, you mean for like the satellite? Uh, what, Peter? For the Earth, for the Earth Sanyak effect, this thing that you're you're trying to dispute, saying you don't make any I'm corrections. I'm not disputing for it. anything. I'm not disputing. Yeah, I'm not disputing you don't anything. Make any I'm trying. I'm I, okay. I am trying. My one and only question, or the the final question that my line of clarifying questions earlier was curious to know is: Would a stationary tower on Earth? And two listen two receivers east and west of it, would they receive should they receive different frequencies? That's all that's the beginning and end of it. I wasn't here to dispute anything. I used this the repeater satellites as an example of things I've interacted with personally, not as a dem not I didn't do the math to say it should be Sagnac effect corrected or not. Like I'm that's not that was just like I've interacted with these things over here. Is that article talking about? If I'm about understanding if I'm understanding what Alan's saying, then this seems like a logical conclusion. Is that the case? That's that's it. No, I would I would agree with you. Cool. I thought you were. I thought earlier you were saying something about how you disagreed with with that what Alan said about the GPS, and you were using this as an example of why you disagreed with him. Well, okay. Here's here's probably why I brought it up. It is late where I am. But as an example of that, the frequency offsets are not so minute as to be trivial. Because you do have to account for them in real life with these repeater satellites. That's all that I brought them up as an example for. Because some people had said, like, 14 nanoseconds, oh, that's nothing. But in RF, single hertz make the difference. And you can hear the difference in the received, just like you can hear a train whistle go high to low as it passes by. That's all. So, I, so I, it's definitely not like a anything to, as far as like, oh, these repeater satellites disprove all this shit. No. That was just a demonstration that that level of Doppler shift why, why will have a tangible that, effect. Toby? We well, so know it's interesting. Because sometimes, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Why were you? Why were we invoking the Sagnac effect? We were talking, like I said, we were, I already said, dude. We were yeah, talking you, about you the missed, like, paper. Us going through like three papers. Like two and a half paper, hours. Right? Yeah, easy question to answer. Why are you invoking the Sagnac effect for for some type of a Doppler shift or speed change or wavelength change of? lasers being or radio waves sent to a satellite as it's approaching or as it's going away from you? It's a good question, bro. You should ask the satellite engineer, lads. Well, we, we know the answer to that. Oh, yeah. We do. <laughs> it's pretty easy. They, just like you can tell when a car is approaching you when it's going away from you, the Doppler effect is very, very simple and easy to calculate with electronics, simple electronics. Cool. That's why you can know your, your speed. Uh, with a moving cop following you, or he could be stationary, and you can get a speed as they approach and as you travel away from you, and get you get your exact speed within you know. I only read this tonight, but per hour. Well, maybe we can tonight. use that to detect rel uh, to detect absolute motion. I was just about to say that mm -hmm. took the words yeah, out of my fucking problem. mouth, Toby. The problem is because re motion is relative. So you can't do that. All you can tell is it's, it's relative. Oh, so then the, oh, the frequency, yeah. the Doppler shift should be relative on, to then. Dude, well, no, not hold on. The Doppler finish, shift should be relative to then. It's, a, it's the speed quick. relative. No, it's relative. So if you're following somebody on the surface of the Earth, you can get the exact same speed differential as if you were stationary and a, an object is coming towards you and traveling away from you. Both will have a Doppler effect and both will uh, be independent of whether you're stationary or moving with the object because there is no difference in relative speed there is no ether that's going to change that reading no one said anything what are you talking about dude no one even made that point well that's why you can look at a satellite and get a doppler effect our whole point is that it's relative to the proportional velocity of the craft and the receiver that's our whole point 
That's what he was saying. That's what I heard. What were you disagreeing with then? Why, and why was the Sagna effect even even brought up? Because it's the same calculations for frequency shift. That's they, You guys try to... Your model has to try and somehow invoke some kind of frequency shift to even explain the Sagnac effect. No, the, the fringe shift on the Sagnac effect is different than a Doppler effect. Oh, okay. So then what, do you, what, is, what is your explanation? Oh, Ken, are you talking? You're really quiet, man. I don't know if he was hot micing or if he was trying to talk. But, yeah, I don't know, man. The, uh, like, in that case, uh, what's your explanation for Wang's paper? You've looked at it, I'm sure. You've done all this crap a million times, Zanuck. Come on, man. You know about Ruyong Wang, Wang, 2004, Wang, linearization Wang, of the Sanyak effect. What's that? Yeah, Wang's paper talks about a mirror that's getting a, you have two distances. To uh, that are the same to to a mirror that splits the beam, and then you have a rotation, and then basically the, the before the light has a chance to hit the mirror, it's it's moved out of the way, and that gives you the fringe shift in simple, in simple terms. That's a side note effect. But we're light talking about a top of wave, wave sh uh, shift or a frequency shift. It's totally different. Negative. It's not due to the light. <clears throat> it's not due to the area changing. The the measurement in the lab, produce yeah. Well, it doesn't matter area or length, either one. That's okay. You can unmute them. And what if it's the rotation? Then the second path will have it will not end up in the same spot, which gives you this fringe, fringe shift, this fringe pattern. Yeah, uh, I'll send you some references to look into. Like I'm familiar with the way you're trying to argue it. That's actually not the case, and I'll give you some references to help you out with it. Not the case of what? Not the case of what the stagnant effect is? It's not. The, <clears throat> the way that you're explaining it is like you're invoking a distance change in the apparatus. That's not the case. Not a distance, a position change, because the mirror basically moved out of the way. That's right. Yeah, right. Shift. Right, right. So you're invoking a distance change for the length of, tr of time travel, right? So, like, I'll send you some references on why that's not the case. I didn't say that. You still keep saying the same thing over again. Uh, well, I mean, you're, that's your position, but like, I don't know if you, you, lazy, you if, if you don't. The distance doesn't change. You have a position. It's in, any, in anything. A ring laser, a, a gyro, a fiber cable, it doesn't matter. Yeah, of course the distance, it does. The, the distance doesn't change. I didn't say it changed. No, but by saying that it's not in the same the spot. Changed. No, no, I know, but you're invoking absolute space to change the time and distance travel, though. I didn't say anything like about absolute time and space. You did. No, I, no, no. You, that's the implication of uh, that's the implication of saying the mirror is not in the same place, homie. And really, like literally, the mirror didn't move. Like the, or I don't know which which particular yeah, configuration he's talking yeah. about, but like you know, the detector moves he, along with the waveguide loop. He's referring to the uh, like a traditional Sagnac. Uh, configuration with a beam There's like no we're saying the mirrors okay i mean i guess that's fine if he wants to try and at least he's trying to make the proper line of argumentation he's not trying to like it's got to be a moving body something has to move this is why yeah, how but the, yeah but the like, distance doesn't move. change no, there's no proper line of argumentation for the does work, then it all makes sense if you're trying to invoke some type of some doppler shift or some type of change of speed no that's not how it works because the fringe shift is based on the mirror moving and the uh, laser hitting it off at a different point than, than the, in, in the uh, first the axis of rotation of the, the device. That's how you have a three ring laser gyro. That's where you can have yaw and, and uh, all the different, different changes no, of that's, position of the object. It's, like, I don't it's, play it's, no, no, no. That's not, not how it works. So that's not how it works. So, not how, it straight away. It's not how. Free, there's no measurement. The fringe shift isn't produced by that. No fringe shift. The mechanism in which you're describing, well, first of all, is inaccurate, right? You're you're actually saying that the mirror is actually physically changing position. So if that were the case, different at, uh, dude, you you said that out of the way. That's what you said. You said that it moved out of the way and it's hitting it off center due to the axis of rotation. So you're invoking a change in the distance travel, bro. Like I'm telling you, listen, which is. Hey, it's been real. I'll send you the stuff in PM and you can check it out or not. Like, it's all good. Yep. I know. Dude, it's Matt all over again. Do you want to do this for an hour and 40 minutes, Alan? No, no, no. Absolutely not. I'm tapping out. But like, uh, like I'll, send, I'll send the references in a bit. That was a great, that was a great conversation. 
shout out to bull Knight. Uh, much <laughs> much appreciated dude that was that was some great feedback and uh <coughs> oh, i think i think he did oh no he's there no he's yeah. there. Uh, I, I, I had to drop it that was awesome yeah. dude. that was some great that's some great stuff to consider because from my understanding like yeah there absolutely should be so like relative to the latitude there should be like a baseline increase of the of c right so and that should definitely <clears throat> that should definitely be represented so yeah, glad to catch you uh, online when i was online to ask my questions in person yeah absolutely because that's what actually that's what they measure that's what produced the fringe in mickelson gale pearson right so that east west yeah. variation toby allen killing it i'll catch y'all later it's been real same yeah. full night Peace. also a pleasure later yep. later yes please see see you around Cool. I think I'm going to tune out on that note, too. Yeah, peace. I'm going to go chop that up. That was a great, great interaction. Real. You guys have a good night. See you tomorrow for New Year's. Good night, man. Yeah, happy New Year. Peace.